workshop. That's what we call them, which kind of like the name, but it's also three long words. It doesn't exactly work well when you're trying to shoehorn things into social media copy in today's day and age, the things you don't think of ahead of time. So let me get into sort of the agenda, as it were, for today. Uh, my name is Patrick, by the way. I run the um, marketing department here at Art Storefronts. Been doing that, I don't know, five, six years now. Uh, been in the art industry a long time. So we'll go over a quick video. It goes around 20 minutes. Uh, high level, who we are, what we do, bells and whistles of the software, the education, um, sort of everything that we put out. It does a really good job of explaining things better than I would do right now if I tried to do it live. And then I'll come back on the other side, I'll rant a little bit, and then the most important thing is getting into the Q&A, your, your questions. And you know, independent of whether you ever decide to do business with art storefronts or not, um, you know, I always say these on these calls, but I don't think it's hyperbole. I think if I'm not in the top five or number one, I'm in the top 10 of people that talk to artists and photographers a week. I run three of these sessions a week, and then I run two with my customers. All totaled, that's five, six, seven hundred questions and answers that I've been taking from artists and photographers on a week in, week out basis. Heard it all, seen it all, um, have some unique insights. So I'd love to hear where you are. Have you sold your art at all? Um, are you contemplate selling your art? Uh, was your career kicking butt and then COVID killed all your offline revenue sources? Are you trying to figure out pricing, sizing, shipping, niche selection? Uh, what media types to offer to go in a new direction? Uh, how you can get things going to try and negotiate with the galleries that aren't doing anything for you at this juncture. Whatever the question is, I've heard it, I've seen it a ton of times, and, I, and I'm really confident I can help you out. So definitely encourage you not to be um, shy on the questions. I'll get into all the various different ways that you can ask the questions uh, as soon as we get over sort of the high-level demo. Um, so yeah, we'll do that right after this. April, we'll go ahead and start the video, and I'll see you guys in just a few. This is the homepage I'm talking about that we just like recently redid. And I think it does a really good job articulating sort of who we are, what we do at a very high level. And if you scroll down the page, there's a bunch of videos and me explaining um, a, whole bunch, a whole bunch of things, everything that we do from top to bottom. But our tagline, which states, everything that you need to start, run, and grow a successful art business uh, really does sum up what we do. You know, we, we get pigeonholed as they're a website company, they're a website company. And yes, we do offer websites, but it is a tiny, tiny portion of what we do. Ultimately, we learned a couple of years ago, uh, the hard way, by the way, if we are going to grow and be successful as a business, art storefronts, that is 100% dependent, surprise this one, but on how successful our customers are, on how much art and photography our customers are selling on a yearly basis. And so when you look at that as the problem that we're solving, it becomes so much more than a website because a website is not enough. But still, we're gonna talk about the website. I'm gonna get into the other layers as we go down. So it does indeed all start with the website. I will pull one up because it'll make it more interactive. And you know, anyone that's been trying, attempting to sell art or photography for any period of time, I'll use Bono today, they know one thing conclusively, selling art, in an e-commerce capacity, digitally online is not like selling other items. It's not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or um, electric scooters or bicycles or anything else, right? Buying art, okay, and buying art online is A, an extremely visual process, and B, an extremely friction-filled process. And what do I mean by friction? I mean, friction is all of the various different things, okay, that will prevent a visitor to your website from turning into a buyer, okay? And so really, everything that we do with our software is attempt to solve for this friction, okay? To solve for the friction, to solve for how important the visual aspects are towards selling art and photography online. And, you know, it, it's never any one feature. It's all of the features working together. It can be little things, like when you select a media type, which is canvas, it changes to a canvas, a gallery-wrapped canvas. Most people don't even know what a canvas is, and so we've developed special videos that show the differences, the nuances in the real world, what an actual canvas print looks like, what's gonna show up at their house, uh, uh, what are the high points of this one, how are is canvas different than metal? Oops, I missed a click on that. And so you can see what a metal print looks like and how it's sitting flat, eventually how it's hanging up, all the nuances, the intricacies, because it is such a visual process buying art. We have a feature called the wall preview, uh, which allows you to cycle through various different room types. Again, 
such a visual process by an art. Not only can you circle through the different room types, and yes, you can add your own room type images in. We use some generic ones by design, and you can size pieces up and down, see what it's gonna look like. Do I need a 36 by 49? Is that too big? Do I instead want a 28 by 38? We're making it easier for your potential customer to get to a buying decision. What if they wanna, their, wall, their walls aren't white, right? What if they're this ugly color? Or there's something a little bit darker. Is the piece gonna look good with this color, right? Because again, buying art is just such an incredibly visual process. Um, you know, another feature that, that everybody likes to talk about that we get a lot of plaudits for is we Here have this, we are we have this feature, and excuse me, me, mute that, called Live Preview with AR, okay? And what this is, is this allows somebody to come to your website with their telephone, can be iPhone or Android, you can see the phones here on the right-hand side, and without downloading any apps, uh, they can just use their phone, their camera, and press one button on your website that says Live Preview, and what this is going to do, it's going to take the camera on their phone, okay, which is gonna show the real room, the real wall, where the art will potentially go, and then it takes your piece in augmented reality and it projects it onto the wall, and you're able to move it around with your finger, you're able to size it up, size it down, take screenshots, and so is it gonna look great in the room? What size do I need to get, right? And so again, this is attempting to solve for the visual friction of, I don't know if it's gonna work in my room, I don't know what it's gonna look like, right? It's just getting them one step closer to a buying decision, removing the friction from the process. And, you know, I've been doing e-commerce marketing, digital marketing my entire life. Everyone loves to gravitate towards the wall preview or the live preview with AR. But the reality is when you do this for any period of time, it's not about one individual feature. It's about all the features working in conjunction and you never know which one's gonna end up, you know, if we think of a sports analogy like a basketball team, it's how many players you have on the court that can contribute, right, to eventually scoring that basket. And so it's why we do the demo process. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of features, all to remove the friction, all to help you get better at selling art and photography online. And when you, when you request one of these things, uh, our outreach team will reach out, have a conversation with you, and schedule it. It goes like an hour and 10 minutes, and we just go through feature after feature after feature. So it's not about any one of them. It's about all of them working in conjunction. Um, independent of that, let's keep working down the page. So we also have a ton of back-end software. It turns out running a, an art business, art photography business, there's a ton of individual little nuance and things that, that can slow you down, okay? Things like uploading an image and how many images do you have to upload to your web page for all the various different media sizes and types you have. It's very helpful to be able to just upload one, have all the sizes auto-populate for you and tell you exactly what you can sell. Uh, things like markups, how do you set markups? Can you do it globally? Can you do it per media type, right? And so no one likes to talk about the back end features, but we have a slew of those as well, all um, there to make your life easier, to give you time back, okay? Um, let's talk about our fulfillment. And I, w we love talking about this. This is in our, our company DNA pretty significantly, but I'll pull up a website. So we're on Bill Stidham's site. Um, or I should probably start here, actually. So we are integrated. Well, let me start here. You can have it any which way you like. If you're an artist that just does originals and you get orders, obviously you're going to be responsible for fulfilling the originals because you have them. Uh, if you're an artist that has a local printer or a photographer that has a local printer, you really like using your printer, you can use your printer. The orders come in, you send the order to your printer. We call that self-fulfillment, no problem. What we recommend our customers do, though, is integrate with one of our print partners, and I'll get into the reasons why. But we've got graphic dimensions on the East Coast. We've got Bay Photo on the West Coast. We've got print partner for our customers in Canada. And then we just recently integrated with a company called Guten that handles the merchandise, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, how does it work? You sign up, you get your, your site set up, which usually takes 14 days or less. You click a button that says, I want to integrate with this print partner. An order comes into the website. The printer gets paid. You get paid. The order gets printed. The order gets boxed. Your logo goes on the side of the box. Boom. It ships to the customer. You touch absolutely nothing. There's nothing you have to touch, nothing you have to do. All happens automatically. And again, it's to give you back that amount of time. And, you know, no one has time in today's day and age to be dealing with the admin, okay? Any time that you spend on the admin, by which I mean sending the order to your local printer, uh, uh, checking on the proof, uh, uh, sending tracking numbers, did it ship, any of that correspondence, 
all of that, if you're spending your time on that, is time you are not spending on your biggest problem, which is your marketing. So we really believe like streamlining sort of this drop shipping, print on demand, automated fulfillment is a very, very wise decision if you wanna create successful artists and photographers. Now, just recently, um, this was probably what, like a month before Christmas maybe, we integrated with a company called Guten. And what it allows our customers to do is sell merchandise of a myriad of different kinds. You know, uh, hoodies, uh, iPhone cases, tank tops. Um, you know, they can come in, adjust the image exactly how they want to see it. Maybe they want to tilt it depending on what case it is, and get iPhone cases and you know a number of different other items. Um, we've got throw pillows and uh, I clicked out of it and coffee mugs, and we're adding more and more and more and more of these and. On the subject of merch, we realize, again, if you go back to our original mission, why we exist, you know, we, want, we need to create a set of circumstances, a set of conditions such that the artist, the photographer can make and grow as successful a business as they want. And so some artists look at this merch and they're like, they turn their noses up at it, and like, that's not fine art. Why would I ever want to do that? Some are like, I'm all in, I love it. We don't care. Our job is to provide as many different opportunities for artists and photographers to be successful as possible. And... We've been totally blown away by how much of this stuff actually, believe it or not, sells. Um, and some of it is higher margin than you would think. Like a throw pillow is $44, and what does a tote bag cost? I think a tote bag costs $38. So sell it or not, you have every opportunity imaginable available to you. If you want to have it all, and kind of like Bill does here on his site, where you know you have your fine art uh, uh, media types across the top, and then you have the merch all in one product page, great. If you want to have individual items in the store, you want to have your artwork fine and then you just want to have a line of phone cases uh, if you want to have one for a couple of weeks and then turn it off you can do any and all of that and it's one click to turn it on at any point in time it's automated it's completely automated in terms of fulfillment and and that's not going to change and we realize again like artists and photographers are essentially just creators right you're just creators and you have a talent you have a talent with a brush or you have a talent with the lens you want to monetize that talent, okay? So again, our job is to give you as many different opportunities to be able to monetize that talent as possible. So that's how we that's how we go about it. And you know, again, it's a debate about when to use it or when not. But somebody on one of these um, sessions earlier was like, "You know who's the greatest rock band of all time?" I was like, "No, who?" He's like, "The Rolling Stones." He goes, "Guess what the Rolling Stones have at their concerts?" I said, "What? A giant booth for merch." He's like, they sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of it a year. If the stones sell it, I'll sell it. So anyway, I thought that, that kind of stuck with me. It was fun. So that's our, our print fulfillment. Um, and, and I should say, too, that we're adding calendars, and we're adding puzzles, and we are adding photo books. And to be honest with you, if they come out with a line of hot air balloons, we'll add hot air balloons, too, right? Because, again, it's creating a set of circumstances such that the artist and photographer can be successful. We don't care where the success comes from. I don't care if Brian gets into business and he's the, the number one iPhone selling case guy of the entire United States. He's got a successful business, right? So not for us to decide. Um, support. We believe we have best-in-class support. If you took a look at our Facebook ads and you scrolled through the 350 of them, you'll see more positive responses for the support than just about anything else. We're very, very good at this. Yes, it's in all the venues you think it is, email, phone, chat support. But in addition to that, kind of what I'm most proud about is we run six days a week, including Saturdays, Zoom sessions, just like the one you're on right now, okay? And you can pop into one at any point in time with any support-related issue and get fixed, get unstuck. There's screen shares. They can take over control of your computer and just get you sorted, uh, get you sorted instantaneously. So we're very, very good at it. Not only do we support our application, we ask, we, we, we ask you guys, we teach you guys marketing all year long, which I'll get into in a second. What if you're having a problem with Facebook or with Instagram or with MailChimp or with your Facebook ads? We actually support that too. You can pop into a Zoom session and say, hey, Patrick, I'm stuck on my Facebook ads. I'm getting this message. Can you help me? And our team will get you unstuck. That's an amazing thing. There's not many companies that do that. So I'm very, very proud about that. Um, that's in terms of the overall website picture. And we essentially do all of that, okay, to give you your time back such that you can work on the biggest problem that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has, which is the marketing problem. You need to get better at it. And let me tell you, I've got 4,700 customers, and there's only one universal truth about every one of them, right? Every niche imaginable, every subject matter, all over this country and others, every one of them has a marketing problem. The person that just 
past five hundred thousand dollars a year in sales has a marketing problem they want to grow that business they have a marketing problem the person that just is getting started sold their first piece they have a marketing problem and everybody in between right it is the biggest problem and so you know we want to create successful customers we realize we need to teach artists and photographers how to market and so how did we solve for that particular problem we created collectively what might as well be called the art business university that's how we look at it because i'm not sure there's a better term to explain it one we have the best digital education that exists in terms of selling art and photography online full stop i'm, I'm hang my hat on this we have detailed documentation that we call playbooks on every marketing facet of imaginable how to run an email campaign, how to run a Black Friday sale, how to go live on Instagram, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time with your laptop on a cell phone. Detailed, step-by-step, -step, audio, video, screenshot, documentation. If we're asking you to send emails, we will give you the email copy. You just adjust it to taste for what you're doing. So the playbooks are incredible. They're very robust and they're very focused on teaching you how to market. We pair that with a 365 day a year marketing calendar, okay? It has on it beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You take on what you can take on. You're never not knowing what you need to be doing on a week in, week out basis. You start doing, you, first, you're overwhelmed. You're like, this is, I've never done this. This is crazy, how am I gonna survive? And then you fight through it, and you, and you got through the beginner level, and then you take on the intermediate, and then you take on the advanced. The majority of our customers follow this doggone near verbatim year in, year out, because it works, it's effective. Not only does it tell you what to do, but it solves for one of the greatest, the other greatest pandemic of our lifetime, the shiny object syndrome, okay? Not only does the calendar tell you what to do, it tells you what not to do, okay? What not to be spending your time on, right? And how do I know this? One, I'm very good at digital marketing. Two, we have 4,700 customers and I get to see all of their data. I can tell everyone on this call conclusively out of the 4,700 customers that I have, I have not seen anyone turn a positive ROI at marketing on Pinterest. No one is making any money from marketing on Pinterest. So I'm going to tell you, you don't have to worry about Pinterest. I see you laughing, Mary. I do not want you spending any time on Pinterest, period. Waste of time. So too with SEO, okay? So the, the calendar is equally powerful on what you need to focus on is what you ignore, okay? It's what you ignore, and that's a big deal. Number three of the Art Business University is what we call office hours, okay? We take the entire customer base, we split it into three. Until you sell, sell $2,000 directly on your website, you're in the traction group. Uh, and after you sold $2,000 on your website, you're in the ramping group. After you sold a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish, you get in the advanced group, which we call growth. We hold week in, week out, every single solitary week, and we took one week off for New Year's, but essentially 48, 49 weeks a year, uh, Zoom calls like this. You come on on a weekly basis. There are It's either me or members of my team. We go over the playbooks. We go over the calendars. We talk about wins. Uh, how it's, Somebody landed an interior decorator and sold $35,000 worth. They're going to come on and tell their story. Not only are they going to come on and tell their story, they're going to say, here's the email that did it. Here's the copy. Here's the Facebook post, and you can go and look at that stuff, right? And you're learning in concert with your peers. Digital online education is not enough. Okay, if you look at the stats out there, I don't care who it is, Kajabi or Masterclass or lynda.com, 30% of the people that buy those courses actually finish them. So we can't just have digital education. We have to have in-person teaching sessions and everyone knows how to Zoom now, it's our new reality. So those sessions, which we started like, I think two weeks, three weeks ahead of the pandemic, have been the single solitary biggest fundamental change to our business we've ever had. If before the pandemic, I had 100 customers, and I told those 100 customers via email, guys, Black Friday's coming. You got to get going on your sale. Here's the playbook, right? And then I recorded a podcast episode, and I was like, we're going to do this. 35 out of the 100 would take action. After these video sessions where I'm able to go through things, people are able to ask their questions, raise their hands, get unstuck, learn your peers, I have 75 people taking action on that sale, and it's fundamentally changing the business. It is making our customers more successful uh, uh, more accountable, actually staying focused. Like, look, you guys are all solopreneurs for the most part. I mean, we could pull this entire group and not a lot of you guys have a big team. You don't have an office behind you where you're yelling at an intern to help you out. You are a solopreneur, okay? You, you know, myself, the CEO, we've been entrepreneurs our entire life. I know it's a roller coaster. I know there's highs and the lows. When you're on those lows, you need to kick in the pants, right? You need to be lifted up sometimes. And that's what these Zoom sessions do too, which is incredible. We follow it up with a Facebook group that is highly curated, 
okay? Uh, uh, there's no trolls. There's no nonsense in there, right? You've seen some of the other groups out there online and how ridiculous it gets in those things. And artists are sharing with other artists. Photographers are sharing with other photographers. The people that are in the landscape niche are talking to others in the landscape niche. Hey, guys, what do you think of this new direction? What did you use in terms of pricing? They're publishing their wins. And so sometimes you can't just hear it from us, the official company mouthpiece. And so it's nice to have a whole bunch of people that are doing the same journey at the same time um, helping each other out, sharing, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? So that collectively is the art business university. And it's, it's like a college. It, I mean, it really is. And the difference is you pay your tuition, you come in and there's no graduates because the learning never stops. Right. And, you know, in addition to that, it, it never will stop in today's digital marketing landscape. The goalposts are just constantly moving, right? Like so quickly, you feel like you just learned something and it moves over here. So we keep you up to date with all of that. As a final, about six months ago, or maybe five months ago now, we started an in-house marketing agency. And it's an in-house marketing agency that only does one thing. It helps artists and photographers sell more art online and off. And we believe already, as of current today's date, it's the biggest, it's the biggest soul-focused art and photography marketing agency in the world. And that's not hyperbole. I've been asking on these calls, can someone name me an agency that specializes only in helping artists and photographers sell their work? I haven't found one. No one's ever put one in the chat for me, especially not a big one. Why? Because my aforementioned point, selling art and photography is not like selling swim thins or ladies' handbags or scooters. It's hard, right? It's really hard. Uh, and we're good at it because we've been working at it for a long time. Also, you know, I, I get upset, right? Because I look at all of you guys as like, you own a McDonald's, right? And if you owned a McDonald's, you have to know how to do the ordering. You have to know how to clean the floors. You have to know how to open the building. You have to know how to operate the drive through window. You have to be able to flip burgers and fries and do all of that and do the ordering, right? Like it's your business. You need to understand those things. But at the same time, I'm not naive in the sense that 80% of our customers still have full-time jobs or in some capacity. Maybe they're service-based photographers and they're trying to sell their fine art. So I get it. You need, you need to be able to have the ability. If you don't have the time to do the marketing and you have the resources, you need a la carte things that you can jump off the shelf Hey guys, I need my Instagram profile tuned up. I need my Facebook page tuned up. I need to help with a sales campaign. You need to be able to do that sometimes. In addition to things like, we'll completely build your website for you. You don't want to do that. You hate building websites. Uh, your fears in life, in order, are death, taxes, and building another website. I get that. I get that, right? So you can drop your images in a folder. Tell us to build the site. We'll build the site for you, okay? We'll manage your Facebook ads, okay? We will manage all of your social posting. And again... It goes back to the top premise. Like our job is to create successful customers. And so we looked at it six months ago and it's like, we need to have an agency. And then some people are like, well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I want to do it myself. Fantastic. Our job is to have the best DIY product, do it yourself, learn, come on the sessions, and then also have an agency where you can pay. And again, it's a la carte or it's, you know, up, up to almost full service. And the, the amazing thing about it is, you know, I've been doing marketing a long time, right? What do all marketers love? A case study. Oh, we love a case study, right? With the sexy data about this huge win and we publish it on social media and we use it for lead generation. So totally did that all the time, okay? Guilty, guilty, you know? And if, if, if you lose, you don't publish it, right? You wait till you hit a winner and, and do all that. But it used to be, I would go and run a case study with a customer and you know I'd have limited bandwidth to do that and then we would build the playbooks. Well, guess what I have now? I've got agency staff. I've got one guy that all he does all day long is spruce up Instagram pages for artists and photographers. He's done, he did 65 of them last week or you know, 65 last month. So imagine the learnings that we're getting. What happens is the learnings are going right back into the playbooks and then they're coming on to the Zoom sessions and they're teaching and we've got a little flywheel going on, right? We've got a little artist and photographer education flywheel. So it doesn't matter if you ever order a single solitary service from the agency. And we don't even care if the agency ever makes any money, in all honesty, because all it does is just improves the product, makes more successful customers, uh, and helps us grow. So we really, at the end of the day, are fundamentally a business that can be thought of as a rowboat, right? Um, it takes our oar, your oar, we jump in the boat in the same time, and if we can get that thing rowing in the same direction, the faster we can get that going, the better everybody does. So that's Art Storefronts in a nutshell. Uh, that's my presentation. Went from selling arts to rowboats. Uh, that's always an interesting one. So that's pretty much who we are, what we do at, at a high level. Uh, you know, it's quite a bit more than a website. And, you know, it, no matter how you interpreted that whole pitch and everything else, the whole ball game, quite literally for us, comes down to GMV. Um, gross merchandise volume. It's a metric we stole from Shopify. 
um, but it's essentially the sum total of merchandise that's sold on our customers' websites. You know, everything from originals to prints to commissions to limited editions to any of the merch stuff to classes, anything in between, is, is our true North Star. Every single solitary question we ask ourselves as a business, if we add this, will this increase GMV? Uh, yes, then do it. If no, then don't do it. Will it increase GMV by a lot? Yes, then do it. If will it increase GMV by a little, let's find something bigger. And it does, it does as a business create a unique set of circumstances where we're true, we feel truly vested in the success of our customers, right? Like the more you guys sell on your websites, uh, the more you sell in person, anything, anything that gets booked through the site we know about, uh, the happier you are, the more you tell people about our business, the less we have to spend on advertising and everything else. So, you know, it, it, it is, it is one of the most fundamental points. And I would, and I would also say, you know, before we get into the Q and a, um, that's why we're adding items like crazy, like a huge focus of 2021 is just going to be how many additional items that artists and photographers can put their particular work on uh, that we can sell. You know, I mean, I made the joke, like if they, if they offer hot air balloons, we'll do that. But it, it, it's only loosely hyperbole that like we are going to add every item imaginable and not stop. We, we have a firm belief that it's not even a belief, it's a fact. Pretty damn hard to make it as an artist or photographer in today's day and age, period period, let alone with a limited product offerings. And so we don't care if your business is originals, commissions, prints, merchandise, booking classes, live teaching, uh, taking people into the national parks and doing night photography if you're a photographer or anything else, it doesn't matter. We wanna help facilitate it and help it grow. At the end of the day, artists, photographers, crafters, sculptors, all the rest, you have a talent with your hands. It could be with a brush or colored pencils or a lens. Uh, or you know, a pen mouse, y you create things. And the goal is to find as many revenue opportunities to best take advantage of that talent as possible. And so we're, we're really, you know, we're, we're on the gas, as it were, to continue to add as many different items, and especially try and source the items where it can be all print on demand, right? Print on demand, meaning, you know, there's no minimum order 30 of them, and then store them in your house until you sell all of them, and maybe sell them, maybe don't like no. The order comes in, the thing gets print, printed, it gets shipped. You don't touch anything, so there's no inventory. Um, so we think that's an important thing too. And so far, I would say 2021, all the reasons it made 2020 great for selling art and photography, you know, it was all home decor ended up being a winner in the pandemic. It's the fact of the matter. I can get into all the stats if you want to go over that. But it was a very, very good year if you were set up correctly to sell art and photography. You had your art on a website, you have your own attention to market to Facebook fans, Instagram followers, yes, but also an email list, traffic to your website. If you didn't, it was very difficult. Um, but you know, if you did, it was a phenomenal year because you had on one hand, increased home decor sales uh, for all the various different reasons. And then on the other, all of the venues that a, a person would normally buy art or photography uh, were cut in half, if not further. Galleries closed, nobody going. Uh, fair and show circuit pretty much shut down full full cloth, right? No one was going anywhere, so online was the only way. Um, those those stats, at least for now, uh, as you know, end of January almost here, Q1 seem to be holding um, true. So still, a really really good time to to be selling direct, to be selling direct. So at that point, I think enough about me uh, about what we do. Let's open it up to Q and A. A couple of different ways that you can ask a question. Um, first and foremost, you can throw it in the chat. Uh, you can raise your hand, and I don't mean raise your hand physically, although if you do that and your camera's on, I will see you. Uh, there's a participants button at the bottom of the Zoom window. It looks like, like two little people. Uh, if you click that, there's a way that you can digitally raise your hand and then your hand will appear in the queue and then I'll know to call on you and unmute your mic. Uh, we've got a ton of folks that are watching. Uh, we stream this on the socials as well. So there's a bunch of questions in there so I can get those. Don't feel like you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to be on camera. If you want to be on camera, I'd love to see your face. Um, but if you don't, totally get that. I hate being on video too, so I'm, you know, I get that quite clearly. Um, Niraj is asking, hey, Patrick, do you have any art store friends members from India as of now? We do have a couple. Um, so we are, we are open to business in India, Niraj. It just sort of comes down to where are you going to be selling the work, right? Like if you have a robust business going on in India, we don't have a print partner in India yet. So you would need to set up your own fulfillment for uh, India for that region of the world. And then anything you sold in the US, we could certainly, you know, the US or, or North America, uh, we could certainly take care of for you. 
So yes, we do have Indian customers. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. No hands are up. Nobody? Anybody with a camera on? Questions? Okay, Tom's going in. I like it, Tom. Way to break the ice. Sometimes we just need someone to break the ice, Tom. So hit the hit the mute button. It's in the bottom left hand corner. It'll be like a little microphone icon. I'll let you know when you get Perfect. it. Yep. Blue flag. Yep. Gotcha. Right, works better. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Patrick. That was a really fast paced uh, intro. Um, of course, the one question that comes to my mind first off is cost wise. Where I don't see a cost um, structure. I know mm -hmm. it's probably per service along the way. Um, can you give us an idea of that? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we sort of do things like, um, well, we don't do things like anyone really, but we are a website company in addition to all the other things that we do. So there's a monthly fee to the website, right? Um, the, the whole art business university, the ongoing education, which really at the end of the day is a secret sauce for 99 out of 100 potential customers because 99 out of 100 potential customers do not come in with any sizable email list, social following, or traffic. Maybe 95 out of 100, maybe 92 out of 100. But so the education is, is, is literally the most important part. And so the way that we look at the education, one, it will never stop. It's ongoing, right? So, you know, the art business university is a, is a pretty good, until we come up with a better one, you know, analogy type of a name. So you sort of pay a tuition fee down plus the monthly to get in. The tuition fee is one time. It's for the art business university in which there are no graduates uh, because the learning never stops. Um, you know, you can't, the, the goalposts are moving too quickly in today's marketing age. And so the least expensive plan, I believe is a thousand dollars down. And I think either 49 or $59 a month. And then it goes up from there. What you get in addition are bells and whistles on the website. Um, but once you're in, you pay the education fee one time, and then you get that ongoing learning for life. Okay. And you said it was thousand down 40 to 50 a month. Yes. Okay. And the reason I don't know is because I have too much going on in my brain period to try and keep everything straight. We, ha we do the demo process and what happens when you suggest or re request a demo is you put in a demo and they call you for like an exploratory call. The outreach team will, it's 10 to 15 minutes. You can ask all like the detailed questions about prices and this and that upgrading, downgrading and all the rest. They, they have better answers on all of that. And then if you want to set the full demo, fantastic. If you don't, don't worry. Like we're not pushy. We're not ever going to call you again. You're like, don't call me. I'll call you. Fine, done. Um, but it's the best way to get all like the in-depth, nitty-gritty questions answered. If that helps. Mm -hmm. How's your business? How's your business going so far, Tom? How are you selling currently? Well, um, I retired a couple of years ago, so I've got a, a slow, small, steady uh, social security income. Congrats um, on the retirement. And my past has been basically selling works to friends. Yeah. And I, uh, I do one of a kind collage work, but uh, that's limited in terms. It's very high uh, maintenance, basically. Yeah. I mean, you're doing one piece and then you have to sell it for, you know, a thousand dollars or more. Yeah. And up until now I've been selling by the inch square inch, but um, that's, I'm trying to downsize smaller works uh, to make them easier to, um, you know, uh, for freight and packing, things like that. Yeah. Um, have you, have you attempted this? Kind of like, have you attempted to sell the prints? Um, no, no, I have not. Okay. What I, what I recommend number one is that you do that, right? Because it costs you nothing to offer it and see, but what's interesting about what you do is it works for painters too. It doesn't work for photographers, but I've got, I've got one buddy and I, I reference him all the time because early on we were using him as, you know, like in years one, two, and three, he signed up really early and he was like, um, he was my case study for everything. And so if you look at his work, it's behind me. It, mm -hmm. When he finishes a piece, it takes like uh, three, three to sometimes six months for it to dry because the impasto is so high off of the canvas. It's like crazy high off the mm -hmm. canvas. Um, and so his work is not one that translates as well to prints, right? But he still sells prints, but it's not the, the, the bread and butter. But what he does is he will order either a canvas or a metal print of his own work, and then he'll embellish on top of it. And he spends like 15 minutes per piece. And what that does is that gives him an entirely mid-level price point. And my bet is, is that you could get a metal print, get a canvas print, collage a little bit on top of it 
and then have an in between. You know, you have you you have an original of sorts, right? With some with some real texture and some depth on it, and it probably wouldn't take you that much. So if you did like you know that entire collage piece, you got the print, and then you did some collage on top of it. Here, I got to stop talking for a second, otherwise I won't be able to see it. Let me see. Well, that translates. Yeah, it looks like there's like a rod on top of it. Are you saying you've already done this? Yeah, this is paper, fabric, mm -hmm. uh, prints off the computer, mm. pieces of wood. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some there's some there's some uh, interesting things you can do there for like sure. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the the larger point is, you know, my takeaway advice for you, independent of requesting a demo and do all that, is get some additional revenue sources. So for you, okay, you've got the originals, I'd like to see the prints, I'd like to see the commissions, and I'd like to see you know, these hybrids, right? A print that you actually do some work on top of. You wanna have different, different yeah. revenue sources, different price points, well, especially. Well, you've definitely opened up the uh, Pandora's box of ideas, so I'll uh, start to rethink uh, that while maintaining my uh, uh, dignity. Yes. 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 <laughs> so I'll shut up and let other people jump in. Great. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And and you know, one other thing that I would say too is that you know, this isn't usually let me go back to my other background because the video is distracting me. You know, everyone on this call, okay, everyone, including art store friends when we do our own marketing, everyone's followers are a bell curve. Let me see if I can get the drawing. It always slips things. Um, you know, on this side of the bell, it's actually reversed. I can't do it reverse. Anyway, everyone knows what a bell curve looks like, right? On one side of the bell curve, you have lower class people that don't have a lot of money. No, they're not gonna buy anything from you, but they're gonna like, and they're gonna comment, and they're gonna share, and they're gonna tell their friends about you. And then we go lower middle class, upper middle class, uh, uh, upper class, and then you know the high net worth individuals, right? Like a, a bell curve. And so, you know, I see a lot of artists that are your, in your situation, Tom, and your starting piece is at $1,000. There's a whole lot of people that can't afford $1,000. There's a whole lot of people that really like what you do that can't afford $1,000 and would buy something if there was something in their price point, right? So you have to look at the price points inside your store, call it collectively a store, despite the fact maybe you don't have one. And you know you need to have some $50, $60 items. You need to have some three or $400 items. And you need to have some $1,000 items. Because when you zoom out and you get the perspective of A, how long you guys are gonna be artists and photographers, B, uh, uh, how hard it is to get a new customer, C, what no one ever talks about. What is the easiest customer to get? The one you already have. The one you already have. This becomes particularly apparent when you get in and you realize you're gonna be marketing this business for the next 10 years of your life, maybe 20, maybe 30. The easiest customer to get is the one that you already have. And so we continue adding items uh, that, we, that, that our customers can use. Like, yes, you might sell somebody on a pack of greeting cards. Yes, it's only $20. Yes, you might only make $10 on that low margin, but at the same time, that's a customer you already have that's now falling in love with your work and seeing it all the time. So when you're out there in your marketing and you only have a $1,000 price point, there's just a whole lot of business that you're gonna end up leaving on the table. And like, look, there's people that can't afford or maybe just don't want the big thing right now. And then two years from now, they bought their first vacation house and all the walls are blank. It's like, they're gonna be looking for art. Who are they gonna call? So I, I love the importance of, of having those varying different price points that I think is just critically, critically important. Um, okay, I've got a bunch of questions in the chat. Um, Alan's asking me, do you have your own printing or who do you use as your print partner in the US? So we use two. We've got graphic dimensions on the East Coast and we have Bay Photo on the West Coast for folks that are in Canada because there's like a, a tariff import duty situation. Um, we've got one, what are they called? Print partner, I think. And then for all the merch, we use a company called Guten. Um, which is one of the huge ones that does like every project product imaginable. So that's that question. I know you have others, Alan. I'm just gonna go down the window here. Uh, Lori's asking, is it possible to get a print sample to see the quality of the printing? Yes, of course. I see April put the site in there. You know, the interesting thing about printing is, you know, once you get out of the mom and pop size shops, and you know, I mean the really small shops, right? Like, you know, the, the small local ones you have in the town or maybe someone that's operating out of the house, but once you get into, you know, the bigger sized ones um you know say they have a warehouse a real legit operation all using the same printers all using the same media types all using the same inks all using the same um equipment to calibrate their color balances and their monitors and everything else so the larger point is printing has sort of become a commodity there's not a massive skill set to it anymore at least in the digital capacity so 
one printer to another, you know, i.e. quality of the prints. Both Graphic and Bay are multi, multi, multi-million dollar companies a year. And, you know, you could get a print from either one. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference in the slightest. They're, they're both super pro. So, um, but yes, you can get a sample. April put the site in there. Um, so Casey's saying, I would love to learn more about how art store prints would help sculpture artists on top of selling online. Uh, I wonder if your marketing playbook covers anything about finding gallery collaborators. Um, would sort of depend on what the, the definition of gallery collaborators are. Um, and I might even unmute you on that one, Casey. I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna find you on the list here and unmute you. Um, while I'm doing that, I'll answer the first part of your question. But if you hit your mic, lower left-hand corner, Casey, um, that should give you the ability to talk. So sculpture artists. Yeah, sculpture artists get host, right? Because there's not a sculpture-specific platform that's out there that exists currently that just helps sculptors and just shows sculpture in the best light. So if you wanna be selling online, which is mandatory, uh, you're gonna have to pick an e-commerce shopping cart, right? And there's a bunch of them out there. Um, is our site the best for that? It's as good as any of the rest. Uh, yes, we're, we're set up to sell wall art, but we do have you know some other art-specific type of features that would help you out significantly. But really, you know, especially with sculpture, especially with sculpture, you know, you don't have the lower price points on sculpture, right? Like sculpture is expensive. It's, it's starting price points are, are, are expensive. And what you'll find online is there's sort of an unwritten rule online. Tesla, Tesla is the one that breaks this, right? Because there's lots of people that go online, buy a Tesla without talking to anybody. But once you get to like the, call it, it's somewhere between 1500 in above 2000. Once you get to that price point, there are very few people that just automatically buy that item. What needs to happen? They need to talk to somebody. They need to get somebody on the phone. And so when you're selling sculpture, you're almost always in that situation. Like if you're a sculptor and you sold 20 pieces, my guess is you had 20 conversations with those prospective buyers. So the e-commerce portion of your business, Casey, is not as important is it, as as it is for the rest, right? Who can get sales when they sleep at all point in times? Nobody's buying a thousand dollar sculpture, fifteen hundred dollar sculpture, two thousand dollar sculpture without talking to the artist. It's just not going to happen. So really, you just need your site to facilitate uh, bringing warm leads in, knowing who they are, and then setting up the conversation so that you can have the video chat and go over what the sculpture looks like and talk about it. So I would say that number one. Number two, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're a sculptor or you know you're doing collages like Tom or, or photographs like Brian. I assume that's a photograph on the, on the back there, right? Your, your, your biggest problem is marketing. You have a marketing problem. It's a massive problem. It's not going away. The people that are Art Store Friends customers that are selling over $500,000 of art a year still have a marketing problem. They want to double the amount of leads they have. They want to double the amount of sales. Guess how you do that? Marketing. Uh, so especially as you talk about a business in which the artist, the photographer, the sculptor, the collager is going to be selling direct okay, is going to be marketing to their own customers, you will not have, you, you will not not have a marketing problem for the next 15 years of your business, it's not going away. Art Storefronts has a marketing problem, we all do, it's attention. Attention is really what the currency is in today's day and age. So why did I go on that rant? Because we are better at teaching artists uh, et al at marketing than anyone else that I know of. And one, we're really good at digital marketing. Two, we've been at this for a long time, so we've just been working on one single solitary problem for the last like seven years. And then also, you know, I've got data now on 4,800 or 4,700, wherever we are, customers. And I get to see the ones that are doing great. What are they doing that's working? And, you know, put all that into combination with the education product we have. And I think you will find us a better destination than the other e-commerce providers based solely on the fact that the website's not going to get it done for you, Casey, number one. And number two, uh, you got a marketing problem that you need to fix. So finding gallery coll coll collaborators. I unmuted you, it didn't look, didn't look like you got your mic. I don't really understand what a gallery uh, collaborator is unless you're saying just getting into a gallery. But even, you know, even the getting into the gallery, you know, number one, and, 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 and usually this, I get pigeonholed into this, like, what, you're against going into galleries? No, I'm not against going into galleries. What, you're against being on online uh, marketplaces? No, I'm not against being on online marketplaces. I am pro finding a revenue source that works. That is damn hard to do. If you do, squeeze it with both hands and try to get as much out of it as you can. The problem with the gallery relationship, uh, notwithstanding the fact that I find it to be exploitative just personally, is yes, if you have an offline revenue source working, awesome. But, 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 build it, not in lieu of, but in addition to building your own website, your own attention, the own, the own people that you can market to in perpetuity. I mean, I've, I've got a call. 
coming up this week. It's a guy that sold well over a million dollars worth of art. He was selling a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, and then COVID hit, all of his galleries closed and his revenue sources are just toast. And you don't wanna be in his situation because he's never had to market. He does not have his own email list. He has no idea who his collectors are. He can't call them up and offer them deals. Like if you are not building uh, with some portion of your time, some margin of your business's time, uh, your own attention, your own website traffic, your own social following, your own collectors that you can email in perpetuity, you are always gonna be subject to the whims of whatever comes down the pike. It could be an algorithm change on Facebook, or if you're on the online marketplace, the same thing. Algorithm change, they kick you to page 62. You went from selling $10,000 a month, you're selling nothing, right? So we hate, we hate the thought of anybody being in that position. We do not want anyone to be in that position ever. So we're, we're, we're you know, if you get a gallery working, great. Where was I going with that? Oh, also, so many of the galleries uh, are going out of business right now, and they're not gonna come back. They were on death's doorstep before lockdown number two happened. Maybe they survived lockdown number one, but they are not going to survive lockdown number two. So when you realize that, the ones that do emerge out of this are going to have twice the negotiating power of anyone else because they're gonna have the entire crop of all artists that were in all galleries that are scrambling to get into a gallery and they're gonna be like, uh, uh, okay, you. And then the minute you're not selling, you're out and the next one's there because there's gonna be 30 people knocking on the doors. And so while I think it's potentially gonna have some viability after, after we get out of this dumpster fire of a pandemic, yes. But at the same time, I wouldn't be planting all my eggs in that basket. Um, okay, David, I see your hand is up. I'm gonna answer Lauren's question in the chat and then I'm gonna go to David and then I'll keep going on the chat. So I have a full-time job. Uh, what kind of commitment do other full-time workers put in and see results? Good question, great question, get this all the time, love this question. Um, I'd say if you took the entire art storefronts customer base, probably an 80-20. 80% have full-time jobs, 20% uh, full-time artists, and that's pretty consistent. And you know, everyone asks like, well, okay, well, I just don't know how much time I can put in. It's less about the time you put in and more about giving it to me 52 weeks a year for three years. Can you do that? You only have an hour a week to give me. I want that hour once a week, 52 weeks a year, and then, and then go up from there. Um, it's about the consistency, right? Like. You know, so many artists, photographers, they all do not get their business off the ground because they think that they can market for three months, they're gonna see instantaneous results. And so they market for three months, it's crickets, and they're like, that didn't work, and then they don't market for a year, and then maybe New Year's comes around, and they're like, this is gonna be my year, they get the resolution. No one understands the power of consistency and momentum. It is the only way that you grow a business. And so I don't care if it's one hour a week, five hours a week, 10 hours a week. Um, there is no average, right? Like. People will ask variations of Lauren's question. What's the, what's the best-selling size? What's the best-selling media type, right? If I just know that, I'll be able to do it. You can't compare your beginning or middle to someone else's end or middle or any combination in between. Everyone's a little different. Um, everyone has circumstances that are unique to them that change how they do. Some do great right out of the gate. Some take three years to even sell a piece and then everything in between. I'm sure there's a you know median in between. But you can be really, really dangerous throwing a couple hours a week consistently uh, marketing on the high ROI, ROI is return on investment stuff, and ignoring all the shiny objects. And we know what works. You know, I said in the pre-recorded video, I've got 4,700 customers. I look at the analytics. I have yet to see a single person make Pinterest pay. So I can tell you authoritatively, do not spend one minute marketing on Pinterest. And so if I have a couple of other calls like that to make, contemplate what your marketing is going to look like when you thought you had to do 10 things. And not only do I tell you, you only have to do five things, but I tell you, if I catch you doing the other five things, I'm going to scream and yell and rant, right? So when your hours are focused on the only things that matter, uh, you're going to be in a much better place. Okay. I'm going to keep going on the chat, but David's up next. Uh, David, go ahead. I'll let you know when you get your mic, David, bottom left-hand corner. David Green, are you there? I think you're probably trying to figure out how to do your mic. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. You got me. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah. You'd see me too, if I could figure that out. Uh, but in any case, yeah, I'm a sculptor and, okay. uh, have some of the, um, issues that, um, you mentioned certainly, mm -hmm. um, pertain to me. Um, I had a, a recent, um, experience with Facebook and sold a couple of, um, actually three, um, stone carvings okay. in two posts. Um, which was, was nice. I was using a, uh, a video with a turntable. Okay. And that showed it off very nicely. Do you have that capability on your website? 
Yeah, we do. I mean, we have, so if you, if you boil the live preview with AR out, the, the, the bell and whistle that is that thing. And we just focus on the simple 2d, you know, instead of, right. right. Yes, you could use a video, but in your case, if you've got that turntable action going on, you know, the pieces are small enough that you can actually fit them on a turntable. They're not too heavy and all the rest. I would probably for my, for my, you know, static images, I would probably use gifs of it rotating like that. And then I would have a video for every single solitary product where you can get a little bit more in depth, right? Make it longer, more angles and all the rest. Um, and that's how I would show it off. But, you know, the, the live preview is actually pretty interesting for sculpture because um, I don't know if you saw the, the demo in the front, but it, it I did. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, with the cell phone, especially because sculpture is so damn visual, they can project that sculpture. It would be 2D, not 3D, obviously, but they can project that sculpture in exactly in the spot that they have in mind, right? And they can move forward and they can move backwards. And it sounds like a small thing, but it isn't. It's actually because it is so damn interactive, like, you know, the, the, the friction inherent in buying stuff that goes on the wall is like times five with sculpture, right? It's even harder, it's even harder to visualize. And so the fact that you could have, you know, and, and, and oftentimes I recommend using it consultatively because you'll be in that conversation and you can hear one of the breaking points is like, well, if we could just come and see it again, or, you know, if I could, if my husband was around, but like when they can grab the camera, go to your website, grab the sculpture, and then they're looking at their space with the sculpture in there, it gets them quite a bit closer. You'd be surprised. Um, it gets them quite a bit closer. So that would be extremely helpful for you too. But, you know, I, I go to what I said earlier, like if I'm running your business right now, the number one metric that matters to me is how many video chats a week I can book with prospective clients that I know are qualified, full stop. I wanna get on the phone. I wanna talk about the sculpture. I wanna be on a Zoom call. I wanna be showing it off behind me, talking about it, uh, putting it in a room, you know, maybe moving my cell phone somewhere, showing it somewhere else. You know, what, what is your average price point? Out of curiosity. Uh, from, uh, from 750 to 5,000. Right. To 50,000. Yeah. Mean, so depends on the scale. Consultative skills are likely your jam. Out of those two sales you made on Facebook, did you have to get on the phone on both of them? Um, I knew the people who bought them. You knew. So okay. yeah, I yeah. didn't have to. Yep. I mean, and plus one was local, one was in, you know, uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, with the video, it certainly helped to, uh, to sell it. Yeah. Um, one thing about the, um, the AR thing, and one mm -hmm. thing that's always a problem with sculpture is where am I going to put it? What am I going to put it on? Um, yeah. For instance, so pedestals are a big issue for me as opposed to, I mean, there's a million different frames, but yeah. I can't supply, you know, a number of different pedestals. Um, I don't want to manufacture pedestals for fun. Uh, so uh, that's it's an issue. I don't know whether that's insurmountable or not, but. Yeah, I think you're probably, I think you're probably overthinking it. I mean, you're, you're talking about whatever the sculpture just goes on top of how to show it that way. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I would probably just make one that holds, get one one size that rotates 360 degrees and I would probably put my damn logo on it, in all honesty. Yeah. I would probably get my logo etched into it and be done and put 100% of them on that. They're not buying the pedestal at the end of the day. Um, they are buying the sculpture. And if you make the pedestal small in, in, in the bottom, I, 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 don't think that's, I, don't, I don't think that's a major lever, personally. I wouldn't think it would okay. be. Like I said, I mean, if I'm you, especially at that price point, I mean, some of the lower ones you could be selling, but I would be leaning heavily heavily on video um you know video is like one of those like really interesting technologies like look not new not new it's been around a long 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 time right but it's sort of had its own come to jesus resurgence moment as a result of the pandemic i mean i've had five of these zoom calls a week since before march of, of the last year and everybody can jump on everyone figures it out like the, the IT related issues are the minority, like the strong minority. I've had 90 year old people come on these Zoom calls and they figured it out and they don't have any problems operating it. And everyone's doing it, it's becoming the norm, right? Like it's comfortable, like I get it. Like I'm not gonna have IT related issues. So the fact that you, the artist, anybody on this call can instantaneously jump on a video call you know, face to face and, and oh, I get to know the artist. Oh, I get to see these things in person. Like. Talk about a powerful way to do it. It video, especially right now in today's day and age where we are, is is just a catalyst, right? Like, okay, Brian or David's gonna sell a sculpture. Sorry, I was looking at Brian and then David. 
David's gonna sell a sculpture, right? And he's gonna try to do it all without video. And let's say he made 10 sales. Whatever the number is, let's say, okay, it took him seven hours per sale. Communication back and forth, correspondence, can you send him a screenshot? Maybe it's a phone call, all the rest of the stuff in between. My premise is that video could probably get those things done in like two hours, maybe an hour and a half. It's just, right. it, it speeds everything up, right? And I use, you know, the art storefronts example, like we started them a little bit ahead of the pandemic. Not that we were that smart, it's just how the timing worked out. But when I used to try and get like our customer base to take action, right? Like have a Black Friday, Cyber Monday call. You have no idea how hard this was for me. I'm like, guys, I recorded a podcast. I have like a really good blog post. Here's the step-by-step -step video guide. Just, just follow it. And it was so damn hard to get people to take any action on it. And, and you know, I said in like my, my little speech earlier on, I was like, maybe it was 30 out of 100. Just by moving to video in which I'm doing a screen share, I'm teaching the thing live, and then I'm opening it up to Q&A just like this. I'm not kidding. It went from like 35 people taking action to 75. And it, you zoom out of that and you're like, the whole ball game, the whole ball game is just video. It is a catalyst to get everything done. And it is so effective at selling art. And there's you know a million different ways to do it. But I, I at a high level, say it is one of the highest ROI things a artist can be doing. And I don't care if we're talking one-to-one, -one, i.e. David on the phone with a prospective client, or one-to-many, uh, he's streaming to all the social sites at the same time and having a flash sale on five sculptures. Like, it's just really, really effective. And once you come to terms with that, you start getting over all the nonsense. What is all the nonsense? I need some fancy technology to do this. I need hair, I need makeup, I need lighting, right? Like I need to be looking awesome. Like nobody cares, nobody cares anymore. Thanks to COVID, we are now in a situation, I mean, someone, you know, like I'm a huge soccer fan, right? Like every night on ESPN, half the correspondents are in their own homes with crappy lighting and, and cheap Apple earbuds in their ears, right? They don't have any high-end mic. And these are, these are top paid video promoters. So it's like, w once you start coming to terms with that, you start asking yourself, okay, where can I bolt video into my sales process? Where can I bolt video into my marketing process? Uh, the more you start doing it, the more comfortable you get, the more you stop worrying about the technical difficulties. And oh, by the way, uh, uh, art is sold, and yes, sculpture too, based on no like and trust. They need to know you, like you, trust you, right? There's some romancing that goes on. And again, everything goes faster with video. Like, you know, I get on a call with David. I now feel like I know David. If I bought a piece from David and I had a cocktail party showing off how awesome of an art collector I am, I would be able to very safely drop, oh yeah, the artist I know, I met him a couple of times, we video chatted, right? Like they, they want to know you. The artist is as much a part of the brand as the art is in today's day and age. Uh, very few people understand that. You know, They think it's just like, I'm gonna have an Instagram profile and all it's gonna have are two-dimensional images uh, of my art all over it. And that's really gonna help me out and get it done. No, no, it's not. How's that working out for you? It doesn't work. You need to show yourself. You need to show your personality. And if you're comfortable doing video, uh, great, start doing it. If you're not comfortable, get over yourself. I hate being on video, okay? Prior to the pandemic hitting and when we started those workshops, I was never on a video for this company at all. Not in four years of working for it was I ever on a video, not a single solitary one, just my voice, just my voice. I got over it. I'm over it now. I still hate it, but I got over it because I'm contrarian. I realize what it takes. So that's what I would say. That would be my advice. Well, I wish I wish we'd had this conversation a month ago. I actually lost a couple of sales through my website. Mm -hmm. My website has no prices on it. Stri I used it strictly as portfolio. a portfolio. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't want to compete with the galleries that I yep. work with. Yep. Um, I thought that would be counterproductive. Um, Things have changed, of course. The, the, you know, I have a gallery in New York, and they're doing nothing. Yeah. You know, and haven't for a year. And galleries around my local area, basically, one is going to open up next month. So, um, and I don't think they care one way or the other. Yeah. Whether or not I'm competing with them. No. Um, but without a um, a video chat, I should have mentioned it. I should, didn't even think of it. I know. With the customers who you know i love your work and love how much is this and how much is that um i think i could have closed with a video chat that would have been no question awesome. and, and, and like everyone everyone gets bogged down on like the how, how how am i gonna do it i don't care how you do it zoom uh facetime uh a uh, uh, messenger has video ability built in like you can do it any which way you like the point is is that my guess is david you will drastically change your business 
if you just start putting that language everywhere you've got it, all over your website, in your emails, book a private showing, uh, want to talk, available for Zoom calls. You know, everyone knows Zoom, so you just throw Zoom in there even if it's not going to be Zoom and see what happens, right? Already that'll fundamentally change your business straight up. Because look, you know, I, I use this analogy and here you go, Ivana. I, I told you I was going to give it to you. And if you've never been fishing, I'm sorry. It's a fishing example. It really, really works. But trying to sell things, okay, online especially, and, and, and this analogy solves so many, so many problems that I'll get to in a second, is no different than fishing out in the open ocean, okay? You're fishing out in the open ocean, right? And that means you leave the harbor, you steam out to that, that big ocean, and the ocean is a huge place. The only time that you catch the fish uh, is when your lines are in the water and the fish are out there underneath the boat, right? And what are your lines in the water? Yes, it's your website, but also it's a sale. You could also argue it's a Facebook post or it's an email you send. It's anything that you do. And what we think as human beings, uh, and, and, and just let me know if any of you have done this, you send that one email and you're like, oh my gosh, I just sent an email. There's no way I can send another email tomorrow or this week or even this month because I'll burn my list out, right? And what we think in our minds is that we have that line in the water and that all of the fish are just underneath our boat and they saw it, right? Nothing could be further from the truth. The way the world works is the ocean is a huge place. Sometimes they're down deep, they didn't see it at all. Sometimes they're 3,000 miles away from your boat, right? So the only time you can catch the fish is when they're at the surface behind your boat, right? And so you, you cement that analogy in your head and then you start realizing, I can actually send five emails a week. You wanna know why? Because 90% of the people were not underneath the boat when I sent them, they didn't even see them. They didn't read them, they barely even saw the subject line, right? I can post to the socials 100 times more than I am because the algorithms are hiding my post, number one. Number two, they weren't at the surface, right? And then you flip it around 180 degrees and you say, only when the fish are at the surface can I catch them. And guess what? Just as soon as they show up, they're gone. And so I come to David's website, I see his beautiful portfolio sculpture, and they tell, he tells me, get in, get in touch uh, with my gallery and then somebody hits me on instant messenger, sends me a stupid cat video, or my wife yells at me, or my kid comes in and starts screwing with my webcam again, I'm gonna kill that kid. You get distracted and they never called the gallery, you never got the sale and the fish is back in the open ocean. Well, guess what? What if there was book a video chat with David Button and they could have booked it and filled something out and had something scheduled. You, had, you got the fish at the surface, right? You had the right offer in the water at the right time when the fish was at the surface. And that is a fundamental truth of marketing, okay? A fundamental truth. We always look at the stats, okay? We always look at the stats on these Zoom calls, okay? I eat my own dog food here. Guess what? I know you guys were all at the surface at this point in time. This was, this was the time when you heard about us. This was the time when you had the time on your schedule to be able to do a Zoom call. And this was the time when we got you there. The offer was in the water at the right time and scheduling timing worked out. Well, guess what? You, the more you're fishing, the more your boat is out on the ocean, the more fish you are gonna catch, right? And that's so true with art sales. And so that's why you can send more emails, you can post more social updates, uh, you should absolutely take as much friction out of the art buying process as possible, make it easy for them to get in touch with you, and just try to get a conversation, right? You can start a conversation when the fish is at the surface, the fish can go away for a little bit while, you could start the conversation again. So, I don't know, kind of a long drawn out analogy, but that's my fish at the surface analogy. I'm trademarking it, trademarking it. All right. Well, one last uh, thing I wanted to mm -hmm. touch on, and that is um, your, your, the tuition is $1,000 down, then it's, you said, 40 to $50 a month, mm -hmm. you know, to, to keep that moving. Yeah. Um, now, what about uh, like add-ons? You mentioned a chat bot in one, one of the videos and um, other things that might be available. Are those... Yeah, so, is, it, is, so there's multiple different plans that have different features, right? And so you can upgrade and downgrade at any point in time with those plans, right. by the way. Okay. But, but once you're in, the product just keeps improving and you don't pay for anything additional, period, full stop. We've not, we've not added any, uh, uh, we've never charged, or once you're in, you're in, done, full stop. Every, every new advancement that comes with the software, you just get for free. The marketing agency has a whole slew of services. Is that even a word? I don't know why I'm using a slew. Um, One-offs, fully managed, anything in between. You can go into that store at any point in time, get whatever you want at any point in time. Um, in terms of all the education and the templates and the landing pages and the language and all of that, all of that's covered, you get that for free too. So, or not free, but you know, you pay and you, and you get all that for free. So all of that comes automatically. 
um, you know, there's no additional things that you need to do. Like we're constantly updating all the playbooks. Um, we're constantly teaching the playbooks and we're constantly presenting in the results and, you know, week in, week out, Zoom calls, rest of your life as a customer, never going away. We are, we are essentially taking our business, you know, going back to my video premise and rant, and we're turning it into a retail store. Instead of it being open Main Street in your town, it's open Main Street uh, uh, of the interwebs. And, you know, I would imagine we're probably conservatively right now, it, it's sort of not there because everyone's at different levels, right? And there's not like one class for you, but we're open via live video as a business, probably my guess is 25 hours a week right now. By the end of the year, I imagine there'll be 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week, meaning on a day in, day out basis, I don't care what the issue is, um, tech support related, marketing support related, you know, you're having problems with your email service provider, Facebook or Instagram or any of that, or you wanna to come to one of the specific lectures that we're having, you can pop into live video classes, get help six days a week. We already have it six days a week, but we're gonna be probably 10 hours a day. And, you know, I don't think I'm the only, we're the only business that's gonna do that. It's just more efficient, more effective, right? Like clothing stores are gonna get to the point now where you can pop into a clothing store, talk to somebody on video instantaneously. They will go in, get the samples, hold them up, show them to you, put them in the cart for you. Everyone is gonna move to this model um, in, in, in sort of this new world that we're living in. So that's, that's what we're moving to. I don't know why I got on that rant, but did that answer your question? Yes, it does. We can, de we can definitely help you, David. If you're selling well, um, and you, and you want to take the next step, I have zero, zero doubts. We will not level up your business. Well, I wouldn't say I'm selling well. I mean, there, I have good weeks, uh, mm -hmm. but overall, you know, I work like hell and, um, uh, you know, it's not like I could, uh, make a living. I'm retired yeah. from, you know, building houses mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't make that kind of money now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'd love to take it to the next level. So. Um, yeah, I'm very interested. Um, what's the next step? Yeah. So the next step, just request a demo. April will put a link in the chat or the buttons are literally all over our website and fill out that form. Uh, somebody will call you. You definitely, your, your timing is good because at the end of the month, I think we're raising our prices, not on the lowest plan, but on the other plans, um, because we have a ton more in there. So as long as you get your demo in before the end of the month, you lock in the lower pricing. So good time to do it. Uh, April put it in the chat or, or it'll be on the website, but really David, think about that video concept. Yes, I, I certainly will. Um, I just dropped my pen. Hold on. And you traded swinging a hammer into wood for swinging the hammer on stone. I kind of I like that. Oh uh, yeah. It's way more fun. Way more fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's sort of awesome. Um, but yeah. congrats, congrats on retirement, man. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. I want to keep moving through the questions. Um, where's Alan? Alan, I'm going to unmute you because it looks like you have a bunch of different questions. It might be answer, uh, easier, make it more uh, efficient. Alan Goldberg. So you're unmuted now. Um, I'll let you know when you get it, if you, if you want to talk. But Alan says, if we have our own website um, that we can change according to your specs, do we need to pay for your website service? In other words, can we just use the education only? Yeah, we get this question all the time. Um, the short answer is yes, you could. Um, you know, you, you, you get a lot of people, it's funny because we, we, we have these like biases, not biases, but maybe biases is part of it, but you spent hours and hours and hours and thousands and thousands of dollars getting your website exactly the way that you wanted it to look. It's beautiful, it is an extension of you. It creatively uh, communicates how awesome you are and you wanna keep it because you spent a lot of time in it. What are you doing on this call then? Is it really selling that well for you? It's a rhetorical question. I know it's not selling that well for you because I talk to hundreds of you guys a week. Uh, you get super emotionally bought into it. If it is selling well for you, yes, you could potentially use the education. Most people, it does not. You're just emotionally attached to it. I get it. It's hard. It's like getting rid of a piece of luggage or like a, you know, a pair of shoes that you really like. You know, like, no, they're so comfortable. Um, the reality is, is that we have a whole lot of our marketing bells and whistles built into the website. So we don't even publish all these things, but I'll just, I'll tell you one because it's fun to talk about. We have this thing that we call Art Buyer AI. It's sort of a snazzy name for a proprietary cookie that we have. The cookie is what tracks you. And easier way to think about it is, I'll just tell you a story and this, this will make you think about it. Think about going into an Apple store. So on our websites, the Art Buyer AI is like having a webcam in the upper corner of the Apple store. 
And let's say Wes here walks into the Apple store. Okay. The camera starts tracking him and he goes and grabs an iPhone, picks it up, looks at it, puts it down. Then he grabs an iPad and then he grabs an iMac and then he goes back and he gets the iPhone and he buys. Instantaneously, our website will flash up a little box like this and it'll say, hey, Patrick, Wes just came into the store. He looked at the iPhone, bought it, looked at the iPad and also looked at the, the, the MacBook. Here's the prices, here's the sizes he looked like. It will pop up the email text for you and the email text will say the following and it's pre-populated. It'll say, hey, Wes, it's Patrick. Thank you so much for coming into the store and buying that iPhone. I am so thrilled to have you as a customer. Uh, one thing I did notice is that you also looked at the iPad and uh, the, the MacBook Pro or the AirBook, whatever I called it. Um, if you have any questions about those, do let me know. Love to jump on a video chat, love to answer them for you. Um, and just to let you know, for first time customers, uh, one of the things that we do is we offer an initial deal where you can bundle three items and take an additional such and such percentage off. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, I'd be happy to keep that deal open. If not, no worries. I'm so pleased to have you as a customer. Uh, please do enjoy your piece. Let me know when it gets to your house. And you can go in and edit the text or you can click send, right? And we have a whole bunch of different features like that. that that's why we do the demo process because it's too much to talk about on one call. But we have a bunch of stuff like that, Alan, that's built into the website. So even if you love that site and you're like, oh, yeah, I don't care, yes, you could still drive the traffic to that website. But what ends up happening for people like you that end up signing up, they go like two or three months and then they eventually just move over anyway. But you could also put the store, you could also put it on a subdomain. So if you have alangoldbergart.com, you could do your regular website there and then you could set up a, a, a subdomain at store dot alangoldbergart.com and then your art storefronts install could live there so that would be another way to use it um okay brian's got two questions uh how do you handle limited editions and i have an existing website how would you integrate with that i'm gonna unmute you brian so that sorts the what did, did, did that answer um the website question uh yes can you hear me yeah i got you um okay so let's let's yeah, yeah go ahead I'm sorry. Yeah, the the only question I guess related to the website that I was wondering about is, of course, you know, hosting. Mm -hmm. You know, you pay. You know, you pay money. You know, for like for me for Wix, mm -hmm. and so of course, moving that over, you lose the money and so forth. So that's kind of you know that's really kind of the question. And also too, let's say, you know, three four years whatever down the road, let's say okay, well you know. I want to leave art storefronts, mm -hmm. then what happens to the, the site? I assume I lose the site because I'm no longer with you guys. Great question. Love this question. So with us, the artist owns everything, which is fantastic, right? So let's say you've got a Wix site and it's briancole.com, right? And so essentially you have a domain, a URL that you own that lives on, let's say GoDaddy, for instance, that most people use. Right. And you're pointing which, which, which I do. It, yeah. And you're pointing it to Wix's servers, right? So mm -hmm. let's say you're going to take the leap to art storefronts. All you're going to do is go into your domain and point it to the art storefronts install. You own the domain, right? And not only do you own the domain, all of the existing links to that domain, right? All of the site results that are in Google to that domain, you own. You point it at art storefronts. You work at art storefronts for four years. You build more traffic, more links, more cachet with Google. Google likes you. You've been in the search engine for a number of years. Then you want to go back to Wix? You just flip the switch again. And you go back to Wix. Done. It's that simple. Okay. You, okay. Uh, you, you, you own everything. And by the way, that should be the only way anyone ever does anything because it is damn difficult to get a site that ranks well in Google and that takes time, right? So, you know, you should always own that domain name, never not own that domain name. Um, so yeah, that's number one. Uh, let me know if that covers the, the website tools and then I can get into limited editions. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I'm good. I'm good. Got there. And so how do you handle limited editions? Are you asking from the signature standpoint or are you asking from the pricing standpoint or, or web display? What, what angle? Um, from a printing standpoint mm -hmm. and kind of a marketing standpoint, a little mm -hmm. bit, um, because my website, I actually have a logo mm -hmm. uh, and, it's, and it's registered. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, like if I sell a print, um, what I, what I, whether it be through the gallery or, or my own, um, I have a print company that I deal with. Mm -hmm. And so they get the email. They will either get the email if it's through the site mm -hmm. or, you know, I'll let them know and they'll print it out. And once they, once it's print before they will actually ship it, mm -hmm. I'll go in, sign it, and then they'll go ahead and ship it out. So of course the, you know, the thing that I don't like about that is there is the middleman. 
right? Yeah. So there's there there's that time, yeah. You know that I'm that I'm losing, um. So I you know I don't really, you know that's I got I got to try to figure that out. Well, I'm not sure what to do about that. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you. I'm gonna tell you. It's important. Um. So how I would do it, number one, and then how our customers do it that are that are that are printing shipping with us. So number one, you should have a price for hand signed that should be higher and a price for digital signatures. You should list the digital signatures ones first and have those go off and that's what it is. You increase the price for the hand signed ones, okay? And mm -hmm. what happens is, is that the print gets shipped to you. You gently unwrap it, unpack it, pull it out of the plastic bag, sign it, sieve it back up, put it back in the box, slap a new label on it and ship it. Now, there's an extra step there. You have to ship it, bit of a pain in the butt, but you charge extra for it. And that's what we find that the majority uh, of our folks do that don't want to do the digital signature, that want to do it by hand. And mm -hmm. much easier. You're not having to leave the house. You know, you do it. You call the UPS guy. You tell him to come back the next day. He picks it up. It's gone. Or whoever you use to do the shipping. So that's, that's a very good way of doing it. Also, you know, depending on what it is, if it's a metal print or if it's an acrylic print or, you know, to, to a certain extent, even a canvas. It lets you sex it up a little bit more, right? You can put some stickers right. in there. You can put some swag in there. You can put a personal note from you, all of which I really like, but charge more for it because your time's involved, right? Like you have to drive to the print shop. That, that, that There's a time cost to that. You have to send the order to them. There's a time cost to that. You could you could avoid some of that, and that's that's how I would go about it. And you just you clearly articulate it, and I also like that it like it gives you some price point variability, right? Print, digital signature. Mark it up 15%, hand signed. Talk about the, the swag that you're going to throw in there, right? Brian Cole art, Brian Cole photography sticker, and a personal note, you know, a, a thank you card, a, a greeting card, whatever, whatever you do. And then, you know, you mm -hmm. have the original, the limited editions, even higher up than that. And you can have all of them on the same product page too, right? So they can toggle between, you know, the three different options, original, limited edition, print. That's what I would okay. do. Okay. Okay. And how much is the... I, I didn't quite understand with the with the pricing mm -hmm. for you. So there's you know, a there's a monthly guys. there's a monthly just like Wix, right? Uh -huh. And then you know it's it's a one time fee um, that it, I mean it's all grouped into one package, but it's a one time fee that you pay for the education, and the education just never ends. Pay it once, you're done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and so the, and so the forty nine dollars that you. Um, I guess what you I believe was the monthly fee that you had I, said. Yeah, I, I think so, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so that is just annual. So going forward, that's all I would pay. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And we, you know, we, we do it we, like, it, it's impossible for me to say this because I'm a deeply cynical person, period. But it's like, Oh yeah, right. Like, oh, you know, what, what do I say in the last one? Takes our oar and your oar and puts them in the boat, row it in the same directions. It sounds like total BS. It's actually totally true. So, you know, you, you look at this, this industry, okay? And you look at this industry over the last 10, 15, 20 years since online has been a thing. What do all artists and photographers do? They hop around from website to website to website to website to online gallery to website, right? One week it's Wix or Squarespace or Fine Art America or WordPress. Shopify, they're constantly hopping around because they think they have a website problem, right? That's one part of it. Number two, no one has a website problem almost. Number two is like when your commitment, okay, is $49 a month or $39 a month or $29 a month or sign up free and three months later, you have no incentive to do anything, right? It is a cheap mm -hmm. little investment. Maybe you build into it, maybe you don't. And what ends up happening is you phone the effort in, you get the website up a year and a half later, it doesn't do anything, you're over it, and you move somewhere else, right? When you sign up for art storefronts, it's like burning the boat. It's like rowing across the shore and burning the boat. Because if we get you for a multi-thousand dollar commitment, you are going to work on making that commitment work. That is not an insignificant amount of money. And so what we found by doing this, one, you know, we have a ton of education to pay for, so we had to do it out of necessity. So sort of the, 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 the awesome discovery of it is, by forcing folks to burn the boat, they take their marketing quite seriously at that point, right? They're not phoning in the effort. They're like, I just invested this much money. I just got a two-year, three-year, five-year deal. I'm in, I'm moving my chips in, and I'm not gonna screw around this time, right? So we find that it like, you know, 
mentally, you're way more committed as a result of the higher purchase price. I mean, you're not going to buy a three thousand dollar toy or a two thousand dollar toy and not use it, right? You use that baby all mm -hmm. the time, right? So, it 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 works. It works to your advantage in that capacity as well. I would say, you you know, you get you get people that are all actually wanting to grow a business. They're not talking about it. They're not looking for someone to blame. They're working on their marketing, which is the, you know the whole ball of wax. At the end of the day. Okay. Can I, is it okay if I ask one last yes, question? Yes, go ahead. Of course, sure. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so one of the one of the issues that I'm that I'm ha well, of course, my biggest issue is marketing. One of the yes. biggest problems that people have always told me, just like Brian, you know, you do your your work is really good. We love your paintings, mm -hmm. but nobody knows about you. Yeah. That's your big. You know, yes. Constantly hit hear yes. that. Yes. Um. So trying to figure out <laughs> the marketing piece is, you know, and I just had to come to realize it's like, Brian, this isn't, you know, your strong suit. No. Um, and by I, the way, you know, that's most artists and photographers for whatever reason, genetically speaking, the concentric circles rarely line up, right? <laughs> like you either have the artist brain or you have the marketing brain, but there's very little crossover, right? Like out of macro, right. most artists and photographers completely suck at marketing. And, you know, I, I, yeah. call me. And then of course, now that the galleries due to COVID have basically shut down the galleries that I'm in, um, of course, my revenue stream from that has dried, pretty much yes. dried up. Yep. So, um, I mean, thank God, I, I, you know, I work full time, so yes. I'm not starving, but, yes. um, but the business isn't, you know, it isn't really making any money. Yeah. Um, so you guys, I know you said that you have a marketing agency. So exactly um, how do they do that? And I'm assuming that that's also included in the monthly. The mark, no, the mark, the marketing paid. agency is not. The marketing agency is not. Okay. So the, the art business university is essentially like DIY on steroids, right? Like there are detailed step by step guides on how to do everything, right? Like how to run a sale, how to email market, how to post to the socials, how to spruce up your Instagram profile, how to run a live art show, how to run a live art show on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, how to run a live art show on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the same time, how to handle pricing, how to deal with comments, how to take payment, what's the quickest way to do that, uh, how do you incentivize this? Like, it's very, very detailed, right? In addition to that, all we do is teach marketing all day. I have a Tuesday session and a mm. Thursday session, week in, week out, where we tell you what to do. The calendar tells you what to do all year long when to have a sale, when not to have a sale, when to start your sale, when to finish your sale, when to just regularly post us on the socials, when to have a giveaway, when to have a live art show. We teach you all year long, right? The agency, uh -huh. the agency is there because we have 80% of our customers in the same boat that you are. They have a full-time job, then they have their art career. They want their art career to be bigger, but they have a full-time job. And so a lot of times they don't have the time to execute on the marketing in the slightest. So the agency exists for when you're in those situations. And, and, and you know, the agency could be thought of as like, you know, walking into your local like 7-Eleven, there's a whole bunch of different products on the shelf, right? Maybe you just need your Instagram profile spruced up. You can go in and buy that product. Maybe you need your Facebook profile suited up. You can go buy that product. Maybe you need a sales campaign run. You can go and get that product. Maybe you want all of your marketing taken care of on a monthly basis. There's that product too. So we're continuing to build the agency, um, but the agency is an additional fee, but you don't need it if you're in a DIY capacity because the education we have is really, really good. And what's amazing is you know, I don't care if the agency ever makes a dime. It doesn't matter to me. All that thing has to do is break even. Why? Because it's gonna make our customers more successful, number one. Number two, I've got guys in the agency and gals that all they do is run artists or photographers sales campaigns, one after another, after another, after another. I have guys and gals in there that all they do is spruce up artists or photographers uh, Instagram profiles. So you do that enough and you become a subject matter expert in that. So all they do is they go and they update my playbooks, okay, to the latest and greatest because of what they've learned because they did 65 different Instagram profiles last month. Then they'll come on to a session and teach it. And so we have our job is to have everything from the DIY, do it yourself, don't spend another dime to screw it, I'm willing to pay for it, take my money, get it done, I don't have time, right? So the DIY mm -hmm. is there, the pay for it is there, and then the support is in between, right? But you don't need to you don't need to spend an additional dime. It is all there, and if you get stuck on anything, you literally have five different sessions a week that you could pop into and say, I'm struggling with this part. What the heck is going on here? I can't figure out how to get my email to sync up with Instagram and sync up with Facebook. What is omni-channel marketing? Explain that to me. So you don't, you don't need to spend an additional dime once you get in, but yes, the agency is there if you need it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.
I don't, 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 don't quit the day job. Right. You know, that's, that's another, right. that's another one of these like questions we get all the time because aspirationally, it's like one of the highest aspirations. Right. And most people are like, I want to have this business kicking butt for me in retirement, or I'd love to have a replacement source of income. What terrifies me is I quit everything. It's time to go. It's like, no, no, don't do that. Wait until the art business is providing more income than the job. And then even then take all of that income and dump it into Facebook and Instagram ads. We'll show you how, because that'll five exit while you're still working and have steady income. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, Brian, your situation, it comes up again and again and again and again. And it's got to teach you the lesson that you cannot be reliant on revenue sources where you do not control anything, right? Online right. galleries, rules can change at any point in time. Physical gallery, it can get shut down, rug can get pulled out from underneath you. Show and fair circuit, well, we've seen that that can get canceled instantaneously and you have no recourse whatsoever. So the only, the only hedge against that, right, is your own website, your own email list, your own social following and marketing there regularly. It doesn't mean it's easy, right? But you can be right. built, you can be building it and building it and building it and building it. And you guys, creatives, artists and photographers, you don't go through midlife crises. It's not like you are an accountant and you're like, I'm done with being an accountant. I'm going to go work construction. You can't turn this creative thing off. And so, you know, when you have the perspective of, I mean, are you going to be a photographer 10 years from now, Brian? Now do 20 years, now do 30 years. It's worth it. you got a business there, right? Like, all the time, energy, and effort you spend on, you know, to what your friends rightly cued in on, no one knows who the hell you are, you, you gotta work at that. You gotta work at that. And that's what we do. We show you how to work at it. And we say, here it is, here's the best DIY, here's if you wanna pay, here's everything in between. But guess what? Time to start working at it, doing it consistently, 52 weeks a year, we will show you how. That's it. And then four years from now, when Lord knows what pandemic number three comes down the pikes, and, you're, and the rug gets yanked from you again, like it will be from all of us, you ain't gonna worry about it because you've got an email list and you've got traffic to your website and you're able to talk and communicate to these people and have sales and keep the business going. And for the people that were in that position, which is not a lot, um, prior to this thing hitting, their businesses actually took off because they were one of the few people that still had an ability to sell art direct and had attention to actually do it, right? Like if you don't have the attention, you've got nothing. Like it's, it's essentially like you're, you have a restaurant, no question about it. You've got a restaurant, you've got a website that's got ready to take orders. The problem is your restaurant is in Death Valley in the summer. No one's there, right? Your restaurant has to be on Main Street where there's a bunch of people running around. And the only way you do that is if you have your own attention. And, and you know, it's all the rest. Everything else is just rented, man. It's just rented and it could be yanked from us at any point in time. I mean, art storefronts, okay? We sell, case in point, right? We sell software, education, and we're not controversial. Our Instagram account got shut down. Had 12,000 followers on it. Instagram has told us nothing, nothing have not told us anything, mm. have not gotten back to us, just gone, just yanked out, done. And we have no idea. We even, when you spend money on Facebook ads, you get a rep, and when you spend enough, you get like a rep dedicated to you. Even that person can't do anything. Done, just yanked out from underneath us. So what have we done? We've started a new Instagram account and gone back to work at it. Those are the rules, but guess what? I've got a huge email list, right? I've got a ton of traffic. So it's not killing me, ain't killing my business. And so I think, the reason I go on that elongated rant is I don't want anyone being stuck in this situation again. And I don't care if you sign up today with art storefronts or not. Do not delude yourself into thinking you're just going to wait it out and you're going to be in a situation where the gallery business is going to come back, the show and fair circuit is going to come back. Even if it does, you have to build a business that actually you control the rules. The only way to do that, your own website, your own email list, consistent marketing. There is no shortcut. You do that, you're good no matter what comes down, come down the pike, right? Like you would never put your entire retirement account in one stock, okay? The galleries, the online galleries, the show and fair circuit is putting your entire retirement account in one stock. Don't do that. You gotta have some diversity, right? And you sort of already do, but you just gotta work on the marketing. Right. Yeah. And that was the, that's the other thing about the galleries, like last in, in 2019, mm -hmm. you know, I did, I did, I did pretty well. Yeah. Um, and I had one guy, it was it's an art gallery out in California that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And it was a guy who he bought like two of my paintings and they were like, you know, $9,000, mm -hmm. but I have no idea who he was, I know where he lives. Can't market to him I, ever there's again. There's no way I can get in contact I know. with I know. him. I know. I know. I know. It's the worst. It's, it's, it's not right either. Right. Like 20 years, 20 years ago, you needed them. You weren't finding those people other otherwise. Now, if you market, you can find them. There's no more gatekeepers, right? It's like, you know, the, 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 the easiest sort of corollary story is, is back in the day, you were a musician, you had to have a record deal. Why? 
because if you didn't have a record deal, you'd never get played on the radio. The record companies bribed the radio disc DJs. And so if you did not have a record company, that was the gatekeeper you were smoked, right? That's sort of how it was with the galleries back in the day. Now, right. uh, like the music example, you don't even get a record deal. You just start putting out your music directly and putting it on SoundCloud. You get enough downloads. You can fill enough of the stadium. You don't need anyone, period, right? Like the gatekeepers have been obliterated. That's what's happening in the art industry. Has been happening, and COVID has further pushed it over the edge. So once you realize that, like, you know, I, where's the book? Maybe it's right here. Ah. Most would say that he, can you see it? Wyland is, mm -hmm. no, is the number one. Yep, don't be a starving artist. Yeah. yeah. Wyland is the number one selling artist in the United States right now. He's the biggest in the entire country. So they say. I don't, I mean, who's they? You know, what stats do they have? But if he's not number one, he's number two, he's number three. He, he, goes in, he goes on in this book. Great book, by the way. Highly recommend you guys buy it. Pain in the butt is he doesn't sell it on Amazon. He's doing like some sort of charity giveaway. So it's only on his website. So you have to Google it. Um, but he, he, talks, he talks in there about how one of the most important things that he can do is cultivate collectors. And a collector, according to his definition, I believe, is someone that buys between seven and 10 pieces of art over the course of their career, right? This is this person in LA that bought two pieces. I've seen it with our own customers that, you know, like that guy that I showed earlier, Matthew Laka, you know, your job is to cultivate the collectors because they will continue buying your, your art time and time and time and time and time again. In Matthew's case, some of these people have 15, 20 of his pieces and they're along for the ride because they love you. And so what happens is, is that you get better at your craft, better at your craft, better at your craft, and you just keep raising your prices and they just go right along the ride with you. And maybe, maybe you start small and you only have like 10 or 15 of these people. But let me tell you, by the time you get up into your like 50s and 60s, you have 70 or 80 or 100 of these people. And every single solitary time you come out with the new something, they buy it up. And it's like, the gallery has those people. Every artist has those people. But the gallery has a connection, right? Or, or the online gallery has a connection and you could never market to them in perpetuity. It's like, it's, it's, it's one of the biggest revenue drivers of a business. So it just, it kills you. It kills you. So, mm. yeah. But thanks for the question, Brian. Good luck, man. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, and sorry, I called you a photographer. It looked like a photo behind you, but it's actually a painting, huh? Yeah. Well, you got, you got, you, you, you got some, uh, some serious detail going on there. Okay, I'm going to go to DJ and then A. Ellis, or just maybe it's Ellis. And then, okay, I got a bunch of questions in the chat, too. I prioritize the hands, but I'll go to the chat, too. Don't worry. DJ, you're up next. Go ahead, DJ. Yeah. I uh, just had a question answered on chat, and I asked about how long this pricing was going to last, and they said a week. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if you're at liberty to say what it's going to go to after that week. Uh, now, I have, I have zero, I have zero idea, zero whatsoever. I stay out of their, uh, I stay out of their world completely. Okay. Well, I recently retired after a living life for 40 years, and so Congrats. I'm getting preparing myself for a, to be a working artist. Mm -hmm. one. I'm moving to southern Georgia. I'm downsizing now, and I don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So then I guess it would be in my best interest to go ahead and sign up now, <laughs> even though I won't be using the service for a while. No, don't, don't sign up now, but just, just tell, them, tell them I sent you and say, Patrick gave me the special, I'm moving, you better hold my deal for me, deal, and make a connection with one of the outreach people, and they'll, they'll do that for you. It's fine. Oh, well, all right. Thank you. That's very kind. Yep. Tell my I sent you. And good luck. Good luck. Good luck on the move. Oh, yeah. Well, it's really been 40 years of stuff that I'm having to clear out. Oh, it's cathartic. In many ways, it's cathartic. Look look at look at it as catharsis. Get rid, get rid of that crap. You don't need it. And, well, if I don't use it in two years, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> Love it. And I haven't used some of it in 40, so here we go. There you go. But thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, DJ. DJ's having a massive garage sale, by the way, in case anyone wants to be in the neighborhood. Okay, Ellis. I, I think it's Ellis. If it's not Ellis, you got to tell me what your name is with the A Ellis. There we go. No, it's, no that's, that's close enough. Everyone usually butchers the accent, so it's okay. Oh, no, no, no. Um, now, now I totally want to know what it is. Now you got to say no, it. No, it's Gaelic. Like it's A Ellis is the proper way to say it, but. Yeah, Ellis is usually what I hear, what I hear nine ninety nine percent of the time. So and so, okay. wait, you're telling me I'm that you're telling me that last name is Irish? That last name does not sound Irish to me. No, no, it's actually I'm not even sure exactly where that came from. It's a I know it's a Latin derivative, but mm -hmm. I have a very eccentric family, so 
It is hard to say. <laughs> okay. Well, I, now I definitely want to hear about that too, but we don't have time for that on the call. So <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I emailed you. I think I basically had like three main points I've been mulling. And then mm -hmm. obviously I guess I'll get the rest of the information on the pricing call that I've tried to have a couple of times, but I'm, I'm in a bad reception area, I guess, for my cell provider. So it just hasn't worked out. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to call them on through my work phone, which is what I'm on this. Oh God, don't, now. don't, don't, don't call us. We, we used to have like an answering service in the operator and everything else, but you know, the, like with two weeks into COVID, we shut the office down because no one felt oh, really? safe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that thing's just an answering machine. If they, um, the best thing you can do is, well, I, if there's a good time to reach you, just let me know and we'll have somebody call you then. You know, well, I probably just need to give them. A, I just need to give them my work desk number so they can actually. For some reason, this works through the, this VoIP service works ten times better than my cell service does where I am. Uh, yeah, yeah. So live, here's so. here's what I'll do because I, I I love solving these problems. I'm going to send you a private chat in here. What is work number? And then April will tell whoever your person is. Call them here. Done. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate that. All I'll right. look it up so I also don't have it memorized. But no, it's all good. I will. I'll send that right back. Um. So I, I sent you in the chat the three main, my main questions. Like one's tail end, tail end part of Brian's, I guess originally. Mm -hmm. But the que the the question really is like so like literally I literally came just came back from Central America. I lost everything in a set of dis disasters that just are unless you saw them they were kind of inconceivable and everybody tells me it shouldn't have been even, even physically possible mm -hmm. bottom line is i'm starting over from scratch okay so if i to make my initial website investment instead of building out and revising everything i did before because uh, i actually i do i do just, i do photography i do paintings and though i kind of cross the line between those some some back and forth but i also do authors so um, i'm an author published author so okay i do i've been blurring the line between the two with one site since that crash and I'm starting over anyways, I'm weighing the options of how I want to proceed. Do I want to keep the art, the, the visual art separate, or if I want to have one site that handles everything again, you want some advice on that, that I am open to that too. Okay. Um, you're the brand as much as the product. So early on, you don't know what you don't know. Um, you have assumptions, right? I would not split any of it. I would throw all of it all from the same site. I would spend a year on marketing and see what the results like, and I would make course corrections from there. Not until you do. Is your site capable of supporting oh, yeah. all, that? All day, all day long, all day long. Even with the books, whether they're in yeah, yeah. print or yeah, yeah. book formats. Yeah. All day, all day. Yeah, well, that's a huge plus, okay. Yeah. Um, then that, well, that's, yeah, that's a huge thing. Yeah, I mean, like, look, it, you, I mean, it, at the end of the day, yes, we're set up for wall art, but it's also an e-commerce store. It's just a shopping cart, same as anyone else's. So you can throw, you can technically throw whatever the heck you want in there, right? Um, okay. You know, one thing that we're not completely rigged up for is automatically send digital downloads of like you're selling, you know, you're sending the Mobi file or the Kindle file or, you know, whatever, whatever else, but whatever format, right? that's only a problem after you're getting 10 orders a day, right? If you get onesie, twosie here or there, you send them manually, at least, at I least a digital yeah, part. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And plus I, plus I'll be simultaneously sending them, to, I'll be doing it through for now. I'll be doing it through Amazon and everything else too. I really hate working with Amazon though. They're, they're terrible to do business with. Yep. You know, tell me twice. Um, so okay so that that's a, that's actually a huge one so that's a huge plus in your guys's favor the other thing was like theoretically just say mm -hmm. i business relationship sours you guys change i change whatever mm -hmm. directions want to change am i getting the right impression you guys are more or less like a what we're buying from you is more or less a module from your server so that's not really portable i can't start with you guys and just take that and go somewhere else later on if i decide to go yeah ways. no yeah yeah so the the whole web soft, software all the bells and whistles all of that lives on our server but the good news is is that we are we're very cool as a company and we haven't even really seriously had a single solitary like really bad out the door situation maybe early on there was like a couple where people got like super miffed about one thing or another um but we give you an epic uh uh parachute out on on the, on the way out right like if you're like screw you guys this is not what I thought it was. You suck. Uh, we'd be like, well, that's a bummer. Um, we'll keep your site live for six months. Take your time. Move it wherever you need to move it. And then let us know when it's done. Then we'll turn it off. But you can't log into such and such, right? Uh, gotcha. Okay. The point, so the point so being, we, we've not had like any of those types of blow-ups in the slightest. Uh, our, our like whole support slash, you know, I'm unhappy uh, bunch is awesome. Like literally the only bad reviews we get, I'm not kidding, are the people that know how to make a fuss, know how to be the squeaky wheel to get their money back, like what you're not technically supposed to do. 
So we get these gotcha. people that are like pissed. I don't even know why I'm going down this road. I'm not even going to go down the road. But they, they leave no, like that. And that's not even what I'm looking for. I just yeah. like I like having the exit plan because I've run, I started several different businesses in different industries. Mm -hmm. You never know when something's going to go sour or something just flat out will come up that you just can't. It doesn't work. It doesn't work the same direction you're trying to go. For sure. So you have to change the service provider. You have to change whatever you're in. I mean, whatever it is, you have to you have to change directions. Mm -hmm. So I always like to have that prepared in advance. Be like, okay, where's my flexibility? Where's my inflexible points? Just so I can plot it out and plan. Mm -hmm. I'm a big planner yeah. <laughs> in my artwork and uh, in business. I just I'm suck at marketing. That's the that's always been every every single business. That's the part I struggle with is the marketing aspect. And that's what appeals to me about your model. Yeah. So I that's my weak spot. Yeah. Everybody's. Um. Okay. Well, that's possible what was the other one there was an oh the oh like i said the other the other thing was that everything got wiped out so i am starting over from scratch so really between so no emails no social following like nothing scratch well, literally zero. no i'm I, I was able to recover my instagram account but i lost a lot of for some reason a lot of things it, it wasn't complete so mm -hmm. i lost a lot of contacts on um, my mail in my email list the devices everything that everything everything that was stored on there was was either keyed to my devices or stored on my devices and backed up and that failed and Dropbox was my backup and that failed. <laughs> mm -hmm. The devices were stolen and Dropbox somehow has, denies that it could have happened, but it did. They wiped, they lost it. They, they, the entire account got cleaned out, deleted. So I'm literally starting over from scratch following no inventory. I'm building up inventory. And I'm really, really at this point, the, the biggest decision I'm trying to make is I've had, I'm, I, li I live and work here in Laguna Beach. Mm -hmm. I, if you don't, if you're familiar, if you're not familiar with Laguna Beach, you know, where, you, summer, know you, you know where I am right now? No, Newport Beach. Oh well, I lived down there too, like six years ago. Oh, okay, go. so you already know what Laguna Beach is about, yep, especially during the summer. I do. Then you understand that I why why I'd be weighing the option between trying to get we'll grab one of these gallery spaces that are sitting open and, and, and increasingly dormant by the day, or focus everything on e-commerce. It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. There's no, yeah, there's. I can grab my own spot here if I want to. No, it's not a once in a lifetime opportunity. You see, you're gonna you're gonna really put me down the rabbit hole. Laguna Beach is one of the most unfriendly towards business places in the entire world. The city council is run by the communist Politburo, uh, and 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 you know all of the main anchor tenants are running out of that town uh, uh, as fast as they can, as evidenced by Tommy Bahama right there on the corner. Right, like that yeah, prime spot of real estate going. is sitting there empty. Why is that sitting there empty? Because no one wants to do business in the city of Laguna Beach. So I do not think, and I do not want you thinking that it is some once in a lifetime opportunity that you're going to get a giant retail space there. That is nonsense. So I, I think you should instead of grabbing a retail space at at a huge discount, I think you should say, how can I potentially get my work into someone else's space where their name is down on the line, uh, they're on the lease, and I can give them. 10 cents on the dollar that they're paying in a monthly basis, right? That's a possibility. Right. But, you know, even even Laguna, which has, you know, been taking COVID quite seriously, you know, it's one town south Insane. of me, so I know this. I way crazier, way crazier <laughs> than it is up here. So I don't necessarily think that Laguna is going to come grinding back anytime soon. TBD on that, but you've got plenty of time in that toxic business climate. Let me just tell you that much. So I would, I would, I would get going. And, and it's going to sound self-serving, but I would get going on creating your work and doing your marketing. You, there's no shortcut into the marketing. You need to start doing your marketing, right? Everyone needs to do right. their marketing. It's no, no different than the advice I give, Brian. And don't think that you need to jump into the retail. And especially just because just because it's on sale right now, they'll still try to get you for like a four, five-year lease, still thinking their spot is sweet. It's not. And, you know, I, I it, until things turn around, I would not touch that with a 10-foot pole. I just wouldn't. Unless you want to make it your office, too, and you have other viable revenue sources, but I wouldn't do that. And that's, that's my own personal biased advice. Well, yeah, I haven't actually talked to council, but I've, every, everyone else I've talked to seems to imply that everything's failing just because of COVID fallout, not because of the Laguna no. yeah, the council. Hostile, yeah, the hostile business climate. Um, the hostile uh, business climate doesn't really apply to the same extent as an art gallery, right? You're just another art gallery. But it's, the, the larger point is it, it does apply towards why there's so much empty space in the right. village down there where there shouldn't be, right? That should be one of the most robust. Um, the reason I know this is, I, I don't even want to get into why I know it, but I've been to a bunch of city council meetings in Laguna, okay? And, and that's and, what I'm curious about because that's the part I haven't done. And I, I've literally just been doing the footwork, but I have, I've had so many 
non-governmental people, just lo just locals. And then that's the one part of Laguna I don't fit. I do not fit their politics. I really don't. I fit Newport. I don't fit. I, fit, I don't. I'm very antithetical to the, the political climate in Laguna. Yeah. But everything else. But everything else fits, and that's why I was trying to think, trying to set everything up here if I could. But yeah. Well, okay. look, yeah. <laughs> You know, you, you and I can have an offline conversation. I could, I could fire, I could fire some more arrows. But in the meantime, throw throw your business number in the chat, and I will make sure um, somebody gets a hold of you. And yeah, there's no shortcut to the marketing. That's your that's your number one takeaway. Excellent. All right. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate your time, and I'll uh, get that email, uh, get that number over to you in just a couple of seconds. Okay. Then I will have somebody yep. call you. Yeah. And and you know, Laguna Laguna is a super interesting spot. I mean, it's like Art Gallery USA, and I do think Laguna is going to come back. But I think you know the opportunities to get in there you, you don't have to outlay any capital of picking up a space in the slightest i, I think that's just a terrible idea okay brian you're up next uh, i'm gonna get you brian and then i'll circle back to some of your questions alan and i know there was one other one i missed in there so go ahead brian yeah hi um i'm a i'm a i don't know where to begin here but it sounds like i have a, a good website i've spent mm -hmm. a lot of time getting good digital captures of my paintings mm -hmm. and uh, I sell, I'm set up to sell prints, but you know, I haven't had any bites, you know, I haven't had any traffic that I, I mean, I don't know, my website will tell me I have some traffic, but you know, I don't have anyone inquiring for anything. Yep. Um, I spend, I typically spend a lot of time on my paintings. So my time might in my studio is very precious, but yet I know I have to learn how to market. Well, that's why I was attracted to you. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying the marketing is an extra cost beyond no. the 1,000? No, no, included. I got confused there. Yeah, no, it's included. Included for life. Okay, and then the 49, what does that pay for? That pays for the website? Yep. And what else? Is there some variation? That's on just that? the, that's the monthly hosting slash whatever fee. I mean, that's, uh -huh. a, that's your normal website fee. Yeah. Okay. And then, because well, you said there's different levels and that's what I'm a little confused. Yeah. The levels are just which features, um, I, I, to be honest with you, I honestly don't even know that the, the division is, I just know it's bells and whistles, like, you know, what bell and whistle you have, like the, the top plan has every bell and whistle we have in the bottom plan is missing a couple of them, but you can upgrade or downgrade literally at any point in time. So, you know, I think- So who's gonna tell me what that, what actually- When you, like, when you I request a demo. With, what's that? When you request a demo, they walk you through all of that. Okay, because I thought this was a demo. That's what I'm a little confused. What, what is the demo exactly? Is so- A private session? Yeah, uh, yeah, private, session? yeah, exactly. Private one-on-one, -on -one, essentially Zoom session, screen share, where they walk you through all the features of, of the website, all the features of the software, all the features of education, all of it in depth. It would just be, okay. I mean, it would just be too much to do on these calls. Right. It's more just okay. like discovery, figuring out, you know, if you think we know what we're talking about. Okay. Because, you know, right now I'm really overwhelmed by all these things and I'm not sure how much time I'm going to, you know, I, I have my, my work is good. I've just got on a national show here mm -hmm. in the Bay Area or the Northern California. I, yeah. I'm in a, a gallery, a, um, a cooperative gallery, but because of COVID things have really slowed down and, yeah. you know, I haven't gotten a foothold yet. I'm, I'm 67. I'm. I say I'm semi-retired because I want to take on this, uh, my art practice. It's something I've sort of been aiming for my whole mm -hmm. life. Uh, uh, and I have some, some money that I inherited and I haven't, you know, I have some money to get, you know, keep going, but I really see the time where I'm going to have to make more money. So that's, I want to, you know, that's where I'm going right now. And I'm going to need a lot of coaching, I think. And I'm just yeah. wondering, is that something that you can provide with, within that context of 1,049? Yep. Month? That's what we do all year long, all year long. Yeah. You've got, you've got coaching and support. I mean, that's, that's, that's sort of our bread and butter, our secret sauce. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So in that private session is that will they look at what i've got already and kind of tell me what's wrong or is it just like yeah i mean they it, it, 
you know that that's a that's a fail a, a false premise on on your part, and a lot of people have it too. Like you know, someone can validate your art for you, right? Like it's not, not my play. art, but my website, the, the 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 structure of it, the setup of it. Yeah, I mean, we've got best practices, but you know, you're you're thinking you have a website problem. You don't have a website problem. You have a marketing and traffic problem. You have a restaurant that's open in the middle right. of Death Valley in summer, right? There's no right, one there. Right. There's no yeah, one. Yeah, that's there. what I'm that's sensing. It. Yeah, I'm that's sensing it. that. And you know, I'm not really that experienced with Facebook. I've tried it, but it's like, I don't really know what's going on there. They don't tell me a lot. Yeah. So you're going to help me learn how to use Facebook, learn how to use Instagram. That's what we do. That's what we teach all year long. What about Twitter? Do you get into that? Is that something? Twitter's not really, I've not seen anyone, any, any artist really leverage Twitter to properly monetize it. And, you know, when you, when you, when you, anytime you talk about anything marketing related, right, it's, it's always a question of ROI, right? So Twitter exists. You can post on Twitter. If you knew what you were doing on Twitter, I'm sure you could make Twitter work, but it's nowhere near as effective as Facebook or Instagram. Facebook and Instagram have all the attention. That's where the fish are. If you like, we got to go where the fish are, right? Can't be, sure. can't, can't afford to be, um, you know, biased one, one towards the other. So it's it's just a much higher ROI in terms of hours spent marketing than than Twitter is or Pinterest is or Google Ads or SEO or TikTok or Clubhouse or any of the others. I know you're like, what the heck were all those? But you don't have to worry about it. We teach you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we teach you. So keeping my website would put me at a disadvantage as far as working with you guys. It would, it would to a certain extent, yeah. Um, but again, like, you know, if I magically took your business and pulled it right off the art span and dropped it right into art storefronts, nothing would change right out of the gates because you don't have any traffic, right? No one knows who you are. No one's coming to the website. So nothing would change right out of the gates. Your most important thing is the marketing, you know? So yeah. you get in, you start going on the marketing. Yes, it would be better with our website than it would be with the old website. But if I'm you and I'm like, I have a finite amount of time and I realize that, I need to get going on the marketing right away. You could start in right away on the marketing and then six months, nine months, a year down the line, you know, move over to the website if you wanted to, but there's, there's just no shortcut to start building your own attention. It's what you have to do. It's the only way you're going to be able to sell. No shortcut to what? Um, Build. Building that attention, right? It's not a light attention. switch. Yeah. You have to, you, you have to, it's a muscle, right? Like being, be, having an effective website in our business is doing a hundred and pushups in one city, right? The only way you get there do 10 at a time a whole bunch of times until you can do 20 and then do 20 at a time a whole bunch of times until you can do 30 and then do 30 at a whole bunch of times, right? It's a muscle. You got to build the marketing muscle. I see. But um, are you saying that that's something I could start off with my own website or not? Yes, potentially. Yes. If you wanted to. Okay. So what is the next step for me then to talk to someone on one on one? Yep. You would just request a demo or our outreach team will set up a call with you. Okay. Yeah. So how do I do that? Um, in, in, there's in the chat here or there's buttons all over our website. You just click the request a demo button on the website. So you can just go to Art Storefronts or Art Storefronts blog or anywhere pretty much. We, we have the buttons everywhere. Okay. Uh, okay, I think that's good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brian. Okay, I want to get back to some of these questions in the chat. I know we've got a whole bunch. All right, hold on. I know there was another one up here from Solomon that I missed. Where did it go? Okay, Solomon, so I think we talked about children's books. I like children's books. I think there's there's a fantastic market for that. And would we do fulfillment on them? Not currently. We're not currently set up to do fulfillment on those, Solomon, just because we, we're not like a, you know, a book publisher. So you would probably be on your own to do it. Um, I would think out of the gates, which is not to say we wouldn't want to offer a book. We're definitely adding photo books, but I'm not sure it would comport to what you're doing exactly. Um, so you would have to do self fulfillment, but yes, you could sell them all day long, and then you know all the all the requisite spinoffs too, uh, which I think would be powerful for that. You know, in terms of merch. Uh, Alan's asking, what is the turnaround time for prints for each of your U.S. based printing companies? So once they receive the file, how long does it take to mail it out? Um, so they already have the files because we integrate with them. We integrate. So your site is integrated, Alan, with the print partner. So the minute the order goes in, they automatically have the file. They, they start printing on it right away. Um, things have been a little bit delayed via COVID, but my guess is they start printing on it, I don't know, 24, 48 hours after your order comes in. Um, do you have a special discount with them? Uh, yes, we have, we have um, 
special negotiated rates. Yes, we do. And so it's either, you know, the very worst would be you will get the same price if you were anybody off the streets and just went to their website to significantly cheaper on certain items. Um, okay, Brian's question I answered. DJ, time limit downsizing. Yeah, I got DJ. Um, Gifford says, I'm a beginner. Do you offer or suggest photos are good enough to sell? No, we don't. Gifford, the only one that can tell you whether or not your work will sell is the market, is strangers. Have they pulled the credit card out um, and decided to buy your art? But he's left anyway. I can see he's not in the chat anymore. So, Gifford, I'm not going to answer your question. Um, if we don't have a website at present and set one up with you and later take our shop and go solo, for example, is that functionally possible? Yes, it is. I think I answered that one already. All right. Bear with me, guys. I'm working down the list here. Gifford already left, so he's out. Adam is asking, is it possible to register without wait, wanting to opt for the website and pay 45 if the teacher decides to switch and be able to do it? So register for 1000 and get help with the marketing? Yeah, it is possible. You'd get a website, too. You'd, you'd get the website anyway, uh, Fatima. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know, request a demo and ask them. I don't, I don't know if we've let anyone do that or not. I honestly don't know what the answer to that question is, Fatima, whether you can just get the, the marketing education and not the, um, not the website in the slightest. Where do you see what people are selling on your site? Yeah, you wouldn't. You'd have to go to their websites, um, Amanda, because it, you know, it, we're not a marketplace, right? You have to go to the individual artist in question. But what I can have April do is I'll have her put a couple of websites um, Put Stidham site in there, April, or maybe put, yeah, just give, send, her, send her a website um, that she can click on and look. I mean, once you've seen one, you've seen 100 of them. Um, you know, all the various different products. But Stidham's got a whole bunch of the merch activated on his site. Um, so you can see all the various different things. Yeah, there you go. It's in the chat right there, Amanda. Click that one and just kind of poke around on that one. And you can see, you know, he's got originals on there. He's got commissions on there. Oh, Gifford, you are there. I thought you bailed. I didn't see you in there. Um, so good. Um, you know, he's got originals he's got commissions he's got limited editions on that site he's got the merch um he's got things combined in weird ways and so you can sort of see all the offerings and everything else um but that's how it goes wow two hour session today it's pretty strong pretty strong i liked it um thank you guys for hanging out um learning what we do having a chat getting into the into the weeds on various different things uh we run three of these a week so if you ever want to come back to one you certainly can uh either be me or members of my staff uh, we can get into more Q&A on just about anything. Uh, like I said, definitely going to raise prices at the end of the month. So even if you're like in the consideration stage, if you're over it, you're over it. Don't worry about it. But if you're in the consideration stage, at least get the person on the phone and talk to them for 10 or 15 minutes and decide. That way, if you do decide to go forward, you can lock in the prices. If not, no worries. Uh, we're not pushy. And I'm trying to think what else. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. As a final, I would say um, we've got a really good podcast and the podcast we put on a bunch of different shows so podcasts are your jam highly recommend you subscribe to that totally free totally awesome it's called the art marketing podcast ton of tactical stuff you can put in um, but we also have a really good youtube channel and we go live on that thing a couple times a week uh, we have what's called the art business morning show solid show killer stuff on there uh, it's a live show and then when it also goes out it's also on the podcast feed so april's throwing some links in the chat we'll send them to you after the fact but really good way to just sort of stay up to date with what's happening, what the facts are on the ground, um, and, all, and all that types of jazz. So, all right. I think we'll leave it there. Guys, thanks. Everybody have a great rest of your week. Uh, hope to see you all again soon.